Rest you after since uh, nearly five years of my delivery of those services to the government, I haven't been paid. Probably, and even the money that I returned to the private account for which I was paid hasn't even been paid to me. Probably being punished for not uh, following the the norm that they have established. They established as a tradition among themselves. That's the reason why she, the uh, kind of general of the federation did not query it. Yes, indeed. If uh, and I, again, I will not rush to a conclusion until I challenge them, especially the Be uh, Beto Edu uh, and her handlers, that if they maintain that the the, the idea of follow or payment of monies government bonus into a private account is according to due process. Let them provide. Let them be able to come and pub, come, and pub, come into the public and public square and uh, explain and give us uh, how much it is uh, in due compliance with uh, whatever uh, directives that the president has made. Interestingly, the financial regulations being the directives of a minister, a co-minister, just like better do to herself, one wonders whether if she's subject to it, that's a, that's a different matter. Uh, that's to the president will determine that, or probably if uh, those who are planning to go to court make that an issue, and the court will determine that. But clearly, the, what, what's important here is that definitely the the the, the or, or kind of general of the federation it did not believe that what Better Do uh, had requested was illegal. If she did, she would have she would have said so. What she did, from what the reports I've read, is simply that you process the money yourself as a ministry and take responsibility for it. We won't do it since we are not going to be accounting for the disbursement of those monies to the ultimate uh, recipients. Well said, Frank. Now, um, of course, you mentioned the retreat um, earlier on that was expensive, like you said, wondering if, you know, the minister didn't really learn much from there. But if we if we go back to what preceded the retreat, when it came to the screening process of of of, the, of her and the likes, what would you like to see shift when it comes to how those who are supposed to hold public offices are both um, appointed or approved, whatever the case may be. All right, guys. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you. It's good to be back again. It's another wonderful day. Today is Tuesday night, January 2024. Thank you very much for your time with us today, my wonderful people right there. I can see we have about 400 people watching us already. Across, guys, do your part. You know what we ask for every day here. To press on that like button so that our voices can go far. I still have one or two presentations to give to you guys, but I just wanted to quickly come in to acknowledge one uh, some of you verbally so we can move on. And also to post the link for those of you that want to join the broadcast today to come in. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you. Mother of all, Mommy Diaspora. Good evening to you, Mommy. Thank you very much for all you do. I appreciate you right there, Co Congo. Sonning Unique, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate you. Uh, Abu Azi, thank you very much sir, for joining us. I appreciate you. Adewale Osagede, uh, Adesuwa Osagede, thank you very much. Marabella Naomi, it's good to hear from you. Thank you very much, ma. I appreciate you. Uh, Moni Olagbian, thank you very much, madam. I appreciate you as well. SO, thank you very much. God bless you all, my people. Sarah Daddy is right there with us as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my wonderful people. Uh, Mofire, my brother, thank you. I appreciate you as well. Thank you very much, everybody, right there. Please help us to press that like button and help us to share. Let our voices go far. Patricia, I know for my dear sister, I can see right there. Good evening to you. Angola Emmanuel Shooks, thank you very much. JTD, thank you very much. I can see you guys right there. Okay, let's do this quickly. As you all can know, we are still dragging this whole issue, you know, because we want to see the end of this corruption even though we know that to stop corruption in nigeria is not easy because the, the, the from head to toe is corrupt in this government even the past governments but better i do seems to be the person that they're going to use as a scapegoat because everybody have interest on this particular matter unfortunately the minister of the interior is also dragged hmm to be honest, that <laughs> I was surprised that that guy was dragged as well. I was surprised. And I'll tell you guys later on why I was surprised. You know, that the Minister of Interior, you know, was dragged. Uh, Tunji Ojo. That's his name. 
All right, I would like us to move on right now, my people. I appreciate you all. Uh, meanwhile, Daddy Freeze, I've also responded to this uh, uh, better. I do, you know. I would like us to really play like a minute or two from what Daddy Freeze have to say here concerning um, better. I do, you know, because it's strange because we are not even sure right now who to trust, you know, uh, how Nigeria can be better, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know because some of us are blaming the old cargoes. And we are saying that okay, we should give chance to the to the youth. But <laughs> listen to listen to uh, Dr. Freeze. You want a youth in Nigeria? No, I'd rather have an old thief that. I said, I said, you want a youth in Nigeria? No, I'd rather have an old thief that understands the system than a young thief that will just steal the system senselessly. You never do minister work. How many months? They don't catch you already. At least other people, where did they catch? If they reach like three years later, person will never enter 40. I'm 10 years older than that. That's just to show you, I'm 10 years older than this person. She's a proper youth. Oh, we don't want all these old people. We don't want all these old people. We don't want all the meal. Any of those old people, whether it's Tinubu, whether it's Atiku, whether it's Obi, I prefer them to the youths. In fact, Buari may they give them, make it a red, they do the way they do. He better did these youths, Nigerian youths. Ah! <laughs> Some of them were born deficient of a conscience. As if they check their body with C uh, 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 MRI, they don't go see one conscience. If they do brain scan for them, if they do CT scan, they no go see any conscience for their whole body. And then their own is worse because as they, they go, it's God. You see, when you see all these our old thieves, they, you go no say they be ritualist, they be you know you know say that they put hand for these ones. Now God be their ritual. Any small thing like this, they will call God, God. Anywhere you go to see their testimony here, testimony there. Youths! People where I seen you. <laughs> Our pastors too need to do better. All right, uh, and that the phrase be that you know, it don't come out now because yes, if you if you have to check. Uh, the whole thing, you know, can the youth be trusted as well to hold a public office, to manage public funds diligently? Is a big question. Yeah, if you see a 37 years old girl, you know, sharing $100 for his staff, <clears throat> even before he got the position, sorry guys, even before he got the position and all that, and uh, going from one church to another to give testimony, now, the question I'm asking is that getting a government uh, job, do you have to go to church to give us testimony? If not, that you have intention to steal. Yeah, just go there. For example, if the minister was a 500,000 naira salary, it, she's not going to go to church because they already know that once they hold the public office, automatically they, have become, they become a millionaire. That's how it works. Yes, go check it. Everybody that hold a public office in Nigeria, 99.9%, .9%, all of them are millionaires. Starting from ministers, commissioners, uh, governors, deputy governors, uh, uh, senates, reps, and many others. The only ones you might not find millionaires with it might be maybe councillors. Councillor, local government chairman up from, from local government chairman to presidency all of them are millionaires, millionaires, billionaires, trillionaires. Because holding a government uh, a job or a public office in Nigeria is a profitable business. And a lot of people are actually investing in this. You pay to get the job. You pay to become a minister. Okay, you want to become a minister, your salary, for example, is 100 million naira. Out of that 100 million naira, you'll be giving me 30% uh, uh, of it every month, you know, whenever I receive your salary. If you agree with that, 
then you are go you got the job. So the highest bidder gets the job. I told you guys before what happened. My first ever movie submitting it to Africa Magic, what they did to me. I told you guys. I was told that, yes, you need to pay. You know, your the percentage, they want, at that time, they were paying 7.5%. You know? Then they were not paying Lagos State Government, and the, the tax and all that. You know? But for you to, for your movie to be bought from you, you need to, somebody that will work it out, you need to pay some percentage to them as well for your movie to be accepted. You see, the, the, the corruption is everywhere in Nigeria. Till tomorrow, this is still happening in Africa Magic. I'm saying it on live. Let them sue me, and I have a proof for everything. Africa Magic, DSTV. So, this is not government uh, uh, body or sector. So many of these people, the reason why they don't work when they get the position is because they paid for it. Then what about we that collect money from these people? We collect money from these people, you know, to vote for them. When they get there, they need to recover this money they spend on your head. This money they, they, they spend buying you rice and uh, tomatoes. They need to get it back. Are you going to tell me right now that all the money, billions that Tinubu spent to buy everywhere is not going to get them back? Are you joking? Or are you going to tell me now that if Atiku comes back 2027, God forbid, and he wins? All the money Atiku has been spending for years, his first priority is to regain all back. Or those of you from a Edo State, are you going to tell me that if Izei Yamu wins the next governorship election in Edo State, is he not going to recover all the money? Because that guy have, have run for more than 378 times, if I'm not mistaken. So this is their priority. They spend. They want to recover all of them back first. I just hope we all wake up one day to understand that we have a big problem in Nigeria. And I really do hope that Bola Ahmed Tinubu use this woman. If she's a woman, I don't know what anybody, adult is already a woman. She's a woman. This better Edu and others as a scapegoat. Yes, we know that, yeah, he ringed himself there. Ringing yourself there to become a president is not enough for you not to do the right thing. I said it because, before on this platform that if you want you ringing yourself or becoming a dictator to do the right thing for the people of your country, then do it. Yes, if I have the power today to become a dictator in Nigeria, to, to, to fix Nigeria, I will do it. But the painful part of these people is that they ring themselves, they do this, and they get there, they start, build, you know, sorting themselves out. If you ring yourself there, you ring election, you fraud or whatever you did, and you go, everybody's complaining, we don't want this person, we don't want this person. For the first six months, everybody beginning to see what you are doing, you sing, everybody will turn around and start singing your praises. But what do I know? What do I know? They said Gaddafi was a detector, but before Gaddafi died, his people were doing well. We don't want to go there. His people was doing well. If you mean well for the people, then do anything to take the power. Anything. Take the power and work for the people. They should use these people as a scapegoat. Nigerians are dying every day. Nigerians are suffering every day. Kidnapping is not a lucrative business. Ritualism is not a lucrative business. Use these people that suppose to listen and heed to the cry of the excruciating Nigerians. Choose them as an example. After all this persecution, prosecute her. We want to see better I do sentence to 70 years in prison. 
The other lady that left the seat, you know, that stole 40 billion, 40, 40, 44 billion, she should be set, sentenced to 378 years in prison. There's a video that is currently circulating right now that I saw uh, that a, a man in America, uh, I don't I don't know, allegedly, was sentenced to 1,000 years in prison. I don't know any of you have seen that video. If you see that video right here on the comment section, it's currently circulating. The man was sentenced to 1,000 years, and according to the judge, said, if you die and you come back again, any child that comes through you will be arrested from birth. You know what that means? There's a way. You, you, there's some people supposed to be treated with an iron hand. People cannot be dying on your in, in your sake because of your satanic decision, your selfish decision. Then you expect to be pardoned when you are caught. No. You shouldn't be pardoned. Who is going to pardon you? You shouldn't. But it's only in Nigeria you see things like that. It's only in Nigeria you see people say, no, she didn't show remorsefulness. If she showed remorsefulness, maybe she'll forget this. As we speak right now, none of their faces in the ERCC page. I don't support Yahoo, 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 this satanic boys running more than the shadows. But before anything, even before investigation, their pictures are already there. So these people's faces should be there as well. Why are we being selective? Criminal is a criminal. It's crazy, man. Now, the interior minister have been alleged as well. I want you guys to listen to this interior minister and tell me what you think about this. I'll come back to you guys. Thank you. Minister of Interior, Honorable Olubomi Tunjojo, launched the online portal for passport application. The online passport application platform is being established for both international and Nigerian applications. The minister had announced in December that the federal government was working to ensure a full automation system of passport application in the country. He said so on this program some weeks ago. Now, the Honorable Minister of Interior, Honorable Tunji Ojo, is my guest on the program. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining us on the program tonight. Thank you very much, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of stories also about you. Not only that you have launched a platform, there are allegations about well, your involvement, your a company linked to you, and the allegation that you are involved, that your company is taking contract from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Well, Sharon, thank you very much. Um, um, good evening, Nigerians. I want to say this, as I've always said, I came into public office um, with, a, with a commitment to, to base my service based on sincerity of purpose and openness, obviously, because I believe that Nigerians deserve to know um, and um, they deserve to be kept uh, they don't deserve to be kept in the dark in terms of um, public office operations. I have to say this very clearly. I saw it and um, actually I was shocked because um, the company in question was a company um, where I was a director. Um, and about five years ago, I had resigned my directorship over five years ago. You own the company? Yes, I founded the company 15 years ago. Because the, the document online the, shows definitely that yeah, I yourself founded the, and your wife, I, isn't it? I founded the company okay. 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But in 2019, when I got to the House of Representatives, when I won election, precisely, I did a change of... Um, this is it. You can have a look at it. This is, you can see there. That is the CSC. I've been making a listen to this story. I know some of them have seen it before. But we are going to talk about this. We're going to listen to this story because as me, they watch and we get the way I just be. The document. Certified true copy dated 2019, almost five years ago. I had resigned as director of the company. Season to hold office. This yes. So I'm not a director. I'm, August 2019. 19, but the, I resigned 1st of February. You can go to the back. Okay. The last page, that was the board resolution. Certified true copy by CAC as far back as 2019. So this is it's, what it looks like. Yeah, that is the certified to copy. Please show the, um, you can show the CAC document of um, this. You can show the CAC document. That's the, to sh my, what's it called? That's certified to copy from CAC. 
the 3rd, 2019. So I had... 8-8-2019. Eight, eight, yes. That's what is dated. So I'd, I'd left, I, I resigned my directorship 1st of February to the board and um, CAC certified it, that certified through copy from CAC dated 2019. How come so I'm not been, even... How come it has not been reflected? This document has not been reflected on the CAC document, on, on CAC website. Well, I'm not responsible for the uploading or updating of CAC website. You know, people so are also I have go not, to CAC have to, not, to have, update some of these documents. I have not been to CAC website. And I'm not, it's not my responsibility to update the website. But what is important, and I can say, is that this is a certified true copy that you can see there. That's the 2019. I came into public office knowing fully well that Nigerians were asked questions. So you, you, are, you were not involved in that over 400 million naira worth of contract? Well, I, mean, I do not run the company. Okay, guys. Let me come in here because some of you watch this video but this point, maybe you might bypass it. He was asked, so you were not involved in that 400 or whatever, you know, that fraud. This guy did not answer that question. Watch. Let me take it back a little bit before we come back there. He didn't answer that question. Listen to this. $100 million worth of contract. I'm, I'm a, you, you were not involved in that over $400 million worth of contract. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I do not run the company. Okay, I do not run the company. That was his answer. Then, Cheung tried to ask again. This guy managed to, 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 to deceive Cheung out of... Because this is one of the things I talk about all the time on these mainstream medias. When you're asking these people questions, you must not allow to be conned. You must not allow to be fooled. You know, you are asking questions. Oh, God, you never answer my question. You are going nowhere. That is how it's supposed to be. Then listen, let's take it from here. 100 million naira worth of well, contract. Well, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I do not run the company. I don't have. You I, don't have knowledge of that. I'm not. I'm not a signatory to any account. I'm. When Chen was trying to ask him, you don't have knowledge of the of the money. This guy quickly stepped on his tongue, so that that area, Chen, get out. Please, no ask that question again. Then Chen, you know, normally now, you know, Chen. Shall so they quickly just move on? Go you move on. Which is wrong. This man did not answer that question. He didn't. Let's move on. I do not run the company. I don't have you don't I, have knowledge of that. I'm not I'm not a signatory to any account. I'm not a director of the company. I'm not uh I'm not involved in day-to-day -day running of the organization. And the company is a limited liability company. Which is, I mean, I mean, a private entity that. So for me, I'm not a director. I'm, the I'm impression sorry. is that oh. you use your office to get a contract from how, the humanitarian. How, how could I have done that? I'm Minister of Interior. I'm not Minister of Humanitarian. But you, you, I mean, if, you if I had your you, colleague you, that you use your office to get a contract into a company that you have interest in as a shareholder, on what basis will I do that? Is a company, is the company not entitled to bid for anything? I am not. I did it. I'm not Minister of Humanitarian. I'm Minister of Interior. This company can never work under Interior because that would be conflict of interest. That would be abuse of office. I never did that. So, and the company is a private entity. And you see a shareholder in the company? Of course. And to the best of my knowledge, public service rule does not prohibit public officers from as we still they talk, so this Oga, the Minister of Interior, did not answer that question. In fact, they would have used Pigeon English to ask this man, Oga, that money you eat for his side at all? Simple. This man not answer that question. I'm not the one running the company. I'm not the one in charge of the company. I'm not. That is not the question now. Even though you are not in charge. Somebody on the comment section right now or some of my panelists right now, you know, if you get money, why I share with them? And they're asking them, say, were you part of the money Niger was shared or whatever? It, the person would be saying, no, I'm not in charge of the people running Niger Wash. Is that what we're asking? Did you eat from the money? That is what she was supposed to ask this man. In shareholders, what public service rule says is that you cannot be a director of which I had resigned about five years ago.
And secondly, the question is even this. Let's get to the bottom. I don't want to go deeply because I don't want to defend the company. The company has a management. Has, uh, they have directors. They have a management that can defend them. The company can defend itself, not me. I'm a different entity from the company. But the simple truth is... You can be a different entity from the company and still share the money with them. This is one thing that makes me really mad yesterday. The outcome... Because whenever I finish my broadcast with you guys, my work starts all over again. Research, checking for what happened and all that, that I'm going to prepare for you guys for the next day. I was watching this yesterday. I was like, what is all this? She was supposed to ask this man, okay, fine. You are not the owner of the company. You were the founder of the company 10 billion years ago. But my question to you is that, did you share from the money at all say yes or no and document that but they know they ask them do you move on i think the question should be okay if the company if they were given a job did the company do the job yes or no was the, was was the job um validly uh awarded yes or no if there are infractions then the company can the consultancy uh, job contract that's what it's all about well as i told you I'm not in charge of the day-to-day -day running. Of you see? Thank you very much, moderator. You see now, like I told you, I'm not in charge of day-to-day -day running of the company. Is that, why, is that why this man was invited to China, for example? I think Bola Ahmed Tinubu needs to scrutinize this properly. To be honest. To be honest. In fact, let me tell you guys. This man... This uh, 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 Tunji Ojo, I measured it on this platform the other day, if you guys remembered. I think sometimes a month or two ago, I measured it here before Christmas. I said in Tinubu's cabinet, I said I admire only one person in Tinubu's cabinet. Maybe somebody will remember I mentioned this. There were, people were guessing, but I didn't say nothing. This is the guy I was talking about. If you remember the day I'm talking about right now, please write it on the comment section. I remember, Mr. Elvis. You said to remember, and then we were all guessing. Oh, God bless you, Mother Rita. Thank I was, you. I think Dr. CM and I you mentioned Tunji Ojo and, and somebody because of the way he was, you know, championing the passport, you know, what happened exactly. with your Nigerian passport. That, that was it. Thank you so much, my yeah, lovely sister. <laughs> this is the reason why this is on that particular day. I said, regardless of how Tinubu gets into office, there's one particular minister. Ha, ah, God. Regardless of what in the future, Nigerians will still want that minister again. They say, oh, I said, I'm not going to mention the name yet. He never reached. This is the man. Because the guy is doing excellently well. I never, in fact, the guy go promise A, E, A, na A. But why can't be say e, yes or no? Not can't be, you know, can't date this video now. What it could happen? But, but remember also that um, as you mentioned is as you mentioned it on that day, I think I, I said it here that nothing can come. I we I mean we mentioned is we mentioned him here, but remember we said here that that day that uh, you cannot trust these guys. So uh, he's just straight to our face now. Welcome it, to this. This is crazy. I'm disappointed to be honest because me myself particularly was a very very big fan of this Martin last night. I discuss him with my family privately. Say, oh my God, this man, if this man continues like this, he can even become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the future. But I don't understand. Come on, yes. I don't blame her for the yes or no way, no fiance. I'll, I'll blame the moderator. The anchor, which is Shehu. Shehu is fond of doing this. We should say it how it is. Shehu is easily carried away. These politicians know how to deceive Shehu. They'll just jump out of the question, go to something and say, oh, you're following the entire that area. No. Yeah, 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 them yeah. Back. Uh, Elvis. Elvis. Yes, sir. I, I, I don't see, don't blame Shehu. She, Shehu has done his job as a journalist. He, he, ha, he asked the pertinent question. He may not have followed up, but it is left to the guests to prove their, 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 the fact that they did what they did or they didn't do. The, the answers he gave is enough for us to make our own judgment, you know? Shehu is not a police officer. He's not a law enforcement officer. 
this is just to ask questions and let people see. No, 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 no. I disagree with you, sir. Uh, I disagree with you, British sir. British I disagree. British British British. British. I disagree with you 100 percent British, British media we question your to you, you start paying on yourself. Yes, but but, 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 but but what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that if the guy is dodging the question, you can't yeah, it's him. your duty to drag him back. You you can't you, you can't but but the little that shown um interviewed him has revealed a lot to us no 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 i decided let, let, let me explain let me explain to you um no uh, no no me, sir no you, let's move on i disagree with you you know Mr. why Mr. Let me, can i come in i live in the united kingdom the british media will frustrate you with questions oh anyway I just, want want stress, I, just, that. Elvis, I just want to stress that see in order for our society to be what we really want it to be it doesn't matter how well you do or you have done. If if one little thing, if you break the law with one little thing, that little thing can tarnish all the good image that you 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 built up for yourself. Uh, you know, say you know. In English, you they speak so. Say it, Iris. All this long distance runabout. We are that not really they talk now. It. Say if you see. No. no matter no matter how well where you do for life, where you do for people, where you do, if you, for instance, you can be a good man. You can be for it's just like a pastor, or a preacher. You've been preaching to people all these Mr. years, Lord, all this while. On. But if you, if you if you mess up the female members of the church, that thing can tarnish your image. Uh, uh, but you are divert. You are going long journey. Say it, Iris. We should blame our Nigerian media for not able to scrutinize these people, strip them naked on the live stream. Maybe maybe they can do more, I agree with you, but I think Sheon did a good job there. Good job as how? I mean, he, he, gave, me the, he, he gave me the answers that I... He gave, not he gave me the answers I want, you know. Uh, okay, that's fine. Let's leave that. Let's move on. You know, call us, please, hold on. We have not done with this video. I'll pick us the organization. But what I'm saying is this. I was in private business. I've been in private business for close to 20 years. I resigned about five years ago, as you can see from CAC document. This is 2019 as a director. That's what the law says. And of course, I'm not a director. Let us first of all establish that fact. No, we are not interested in that fact. The, what the concerns of Nigerians right now is, Oga, you eat for this money, yes or no? And I believe EACC will do that later on. But I expected Sheun, because I have so much respect for Sheun, to ask him that. Okay, before we move on, yes or no? Did, did you receive any share from this money? And he asked him, the man, they say, I am I am not the one running the company. Is that the question? Mr. Uh, Viz, Mr. Viz, can I come in? Go ahead, sir, quickly. Mr. Viz, you see, that this, this contract or what he's talking about is not the only one. Almost all the home ministries are using that, uh, that, uh, that is the company. Almost all of them. See that the question that lady who asked the uh, APC, this thing, APC spokesman. She, the lady said many ministries, about seven ministries, are using the same, the same company of this man. So that, this, ministry, this man's ministry, this man's company, is what they're using to sell some money. And the, what uh, this guy is saying, or this guy, what is them, uh, the one that spoke earlier with you, he said, Shehu tried. You know why Shehu tried? Because if Shehu continue, now the people will say uh, Shehu will bully him. The, the way they used to say, you see, uh, this what is why, they used to see, sir, them. with this your submission, that's why we are where we are today. People like you are the problem we have in Nigeria, sir. I'm sorry, with all due respect, because everybody is scared to speak and say things I raise. That's why we are where we are today. You are an elderly man. You shouldn't say that if Cheung speak, people will say Cheung is bullying. Did you hear how Rufai stripped that APC man naked? Uh, yeah, but many day. times they say Rufai is bullying them. They say Rufai so is bullying them. That's what they used to say. They let that, it be. They're that, that useless. They're useless. They let they it be. Uh, uh, That's why Rufai is doing his job. Uh, yeah, Mr. Ev Mr. Evis, can I just come in here? Yeah. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I'm just to add to uh, this, uh, just to add to what everybody say. I'm sorry, just to add to what everybody say. You see, they when we until we grow beyond this idea of people will say the you know people, and that's like like everybody saying that is one thing that distinguishes 
know, five from everybody else. One thing I see in, in, in Shewu is that when Shewu starts throwing questions, it gets to a point where he himself feels that he is, that is, I can't, is it me that I'm seeing, I'm getting the echo. Yourself, whoever is there, mute yourself, go ahead. Okay, so it's like he got, he, he, I, I feel like, um, the difference between Shewu and Rofa is that Shewu has a little bit of sentiment when he's questioning people, whereas uh, Rofa is outrightly rugged. You know, when Shewu gets to a certain point, it's like he begins to feel sorry, begins to feel this uh, sympathy. I'm not saying that's what, but that's what I deduce from him. You know, at some point, okay. Like, okay, you know, I, I'm like uh, uh, Rofa. So the the points of the, the I don't know who is talking about. People will say he's bullying. He shouldn't even come in. The idea is for you to get the answer you need. It doesn't don't don't yeah. don't care what people say. Get the answer you want. That's just the thing. So Shewu sometimes cowers out, and these people like corners him, and then he succumbs to them and moves so, on. So, 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 every, see, right. every journalist, every journalist have their own style. We don't, don't miss style, sir. Just, we don't style. We don't miss style, Nigeria. People are dying. You're talking about style. What style? Listen, listen, Please forget that too, man. Organi, relax. Please, see, see. See, you're just like your panelists. Some of us are aggressive. Some of us are... Well, we don't that, miss eyes. We we a lot of us are looking up to our media. Our no, media in Nigeria is too weak. Let's say it, I raise. No, they are too weak. Make police do the right job. Let the police and law enforcement... The police, the they job. interview us. You know, see, say, you yourself, you don't even know what you want for Nigeria. Po say, police, me. make them do the Rube, right Rube, job. Go, go you, where you, talk, you where you talk now, say, say you where you talk now, say, make them read, if, if you like, read yourself into power, do the right thing. Is that is that a good thing? Of course you can do that. We have, 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 to save your country, do it. That's what Everybody I say. Everybody has their own style. This young man. And has, so, why are you has, trying has, to change my words? This, this young man has asked the pertinent question that he should ask. What else should he do? In case you don't know, Olumide, I'm telling you today, today, 9th I, January. I'm a, I'm 20, a oh, Donna, let me speak, please. Mute yourself, please. Don't stop me from talking. Let me pass this to everybody here. I'm very, very upset because many of us are the reason why we are where we are today. Some of us, I'm saying this. Mute yourself, Olumide. If you don't follow these rules, I'll put you on the backstage. I'm, I'm sorry. Please. Let me say this categorically. I personally, Elvis, if I have my way to hold power illegally, to save my country, not for my personal interest, I will do it. I will do it. And anybody, anyhow, any way, you can rescue Nigeria as long as you are not doing it for your selfish interest. You are doing it, sacrificing yourself to rescue the country. Do it. What are you telling me? El Elvis, okay. Do you know how many dictators we have in the world? I want that you to help me now. Well. I want you, you want to help me. Name, name me then. Elvis, I want you to help me now. Let us raise an army. We go defeat Nigerian army. You go join me. Better. I, I can't that's discuss good. those things here, sir. You are going <laughs> far because you don't know what you want I, yet. I go far. No, you don't know what you want yet. Uh, let, me, let me meet yourself. Let me continue with my presentation. If you know what you want yet, I will let you know when it gets to the time. One thing we must understand is this. Rufai today told the, the satanic APC man that went right there at the rise that APC stink. He used that word stink more than three, four times. The man beginning to be really irritated by that word. In the United Kingdom where I reside, the media normally strip politicians naked. With their words, the media they will strip you. Go and watch when medias are interviewing me, prime ministers. Then you will know the media supposed to, to, to be when they speak, you feel 
some goosebumps around you. Now you, you are talking, you are asking questions, he's jumping it. People are telling me that, yeah, that is how he's supposed to ask. We are the problems of ourselves. Remember, I've said this so many times on this platform. Maybe some of you have never still know me. For me, I don't clamor for crowd. I clamor for those that share the same ideology with me. I stand for what is right. I'm not a perfect person. If I know you don't stand for what is right or you are away stylishly, directly, indirectly, corny, I'm done with you. Not in my family, not as a wife, not as a friend, not as a colleague, not as a child. I want to ask some of you questions here. If you are a judge today and you passing, you say you're a transparent person, you're passing judgment over criminals, sentencing them, some of them for executions. And the day your son will commit the same crime, what will you do? Will you pass judgment for them to execute your son? Oh, I've watched the movie severally on things like that. And I laugh. Say, yes, I was watching Isakaba. Isakaba is an old movie. I was re -watch I've watched that movie more than many times. The Igwe that, that caught for the Sakaba for the, to, to come to their village. His own son was part of the criminals. They asked Igwe, they, they took his son in the bus and they dropped him there. Say, ah, your son was part of the people that committed this crime. What do we do, Igwe? Igwe will say, you people should execute him. That is the kind of man I will clap for. Execute him! Because as a father, probably, you have warned your child indoor that this is my stand. Don't beat it. If not, I will judge against you. We are not going anywhere because of sentimentalism. Oh no, for not doing like this now. Emotions is the biggest problem that we have. Emotions. I was discussing with somebody, you know, my mother. Let me be precise. My mother yesterday. We made an increment for my tenants. Because from the beginning, my tenants, they have my, my, my contacts. But I don't stop it along along the side. I'm diverting. Then agent is not handling it. But we made an increment of their rentage. One of the tenants reached out to me, calling. He called. He called me. He called me first. The child, his child, was making so much noise. He says, "I will call you back." He now called two hours later. And I said, "What is happening? You don't supposed to be calling me and all that. What is the problem, sir?" They have increased this money. And I pay some money. I have already paid in advance. Before the increment came in, I've paid some money in advance. I asked him, were you asked to pay any money in advance? You paid money in advance because you believe the money that was with you. You don't want to spend it. Then he went on by saying, my, my wife just gave birth with Caesarea uh, operation uh, because of that, sir. Uh, so, so amount like this that you want me to be paying uh, or the agent want me to be paying every year. I cannot. Can you reduce my this way so if i reduce yours and the other tenants they are aware that your own rent have been reduced how do you want me to deal with those people he said please sir please sir then he mentioned i want to let you know how i escalated he mentioned please once and the second time i told him sir i cannot do this then he continued please please then i said please stop emotions blackmailing of emotions we blackmail ourselves in Nigeria with emotions. In most cases, with satanic emotions, pretentious emotions. Ah, please, now, nah. my son won't die. My child won't die. Everybody has a problem. If you tell Oibo, please, you are even in big trouble. If you've done something wrong, you are not telling Oibo, say, please. You want to use please, they do me, juju. They say you come. I stood by my decision because I know I was not doing anything wrong. Come on, guys. Like I said, many of you are better than me and I'm better than many of you. It's okay. I'm not better than anybody, but I want everybody to understand that 
We cannot have a better Nigeria without we don't apply drastic actions into our actions. I'm telling you. We cannot be applying emotions. No, we are not talking like this. I saw some articles today about Better I Do. Some people said she was remorseful. Some people said that, no, she was not remorseful. Some people said for her to go to the Axel Rock before she was sent out, she believed that she can just go to Tinubu directly and talk to Tinubu directly so that... Mute yourself now. What's happening here? Mr. Consign, please, don't mute yourself when I'm talking, please. Don't let me lose what I'm saying. So people said, oh, she went to see Tinubu, maybe Tinubu one-on-one, -on -one. Tinubu will forgive her. May God bless Tinubu, may this do blah, 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 Tinubu for sending her away from the Arsenal Rock. This is what my tenant wanted to do. If he come directly to me, then me will come tell her, say, okay, because of this figure, where they say me they pay, say now you don't talk to me now, okay, maybe they pay this one, but not tell the rest people. You are finished as a landlord. You are dead for doing that. Because obviously, the other tenants, one day, they go hear him. We are not going anywhere in Nigeria if we don't handle things how it's supposed to be handled. Sometimes I allow you people to say things how you like here. Doesn't mean I always agree. And I don't expect everybody to agree with me right now. But the only way Nigeria can be better, at least for the first 10 years, let everybody be handled with a hand your hand. For the first 10 years, everybody, everybody, so that we can stabilize our country, structure our country to a proper country. All these practices of nepotism, sentimentalism, uh, favoritism, and all that, we are not going anywhere. Thank you. And that is dated. This is certified to copy. Anybody can go to CAC on freedom of information and ask, and ask. I'm not a director, but what I'm even saying is this. I don't want to double into the arena of investigation. I don't want to double into the arena of defending the company. I don't run the company. But this is so, about you because it is because of your name linked to the company that this is brought up. So you are saying that the presidency or anyone has a right to look into this, isn't it? Are you? Yeah, you're willing, no, you're, you're of course, willing to, why not? I'm not a you're willing to surrender yourself saying, to any kind I'm of saying this, I this. have no business with it. Let's get that straight. Absolutely no business because one, I am not involved in the day to day running of the country. You see, they are asking you, some of you, they here, they defend them already. They are asking you, you thief from this money, you, you drink water from this money. I have no business with the company. I'm not part of the day to day running of the company. Who asks you that question? Who is interested? Who is running the company? We are talking about the money that was embezzled. We are talking about 585 million, half, more than half a billion naira. Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians have lost their lives because of this satanic act. But, they, but, 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 but need to get it clear. Mr. 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 We are not defending the guy, you. We are not defending I never, I never the guy. You said the guy. was I right. Him. You, you like the way they answer right no, now. No, no, no. You are the satanic people already. No, no, you are not going to force my opinion on him. You don't do a good job. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Okay, are you not telling me now you are not part of the situation? I'm not defending the guy. I'm not defending no, the guy. No, Mr. Davis, you said everything wrong. Job. Nobody defended him. I All told right. you, even the man, the man's company is used, is being used to transform money. Because now only you want to change that. Now only you want to change that. Now only you want to change that. Nobody defended the man. Nobody defended right. Shehu. Well, you I know nobody defended him. Okay, I didn't defend him. My brother Lumude, you know, say, normally, normally, me not the talk, now they give submission for a year. Today, Today, maybe not just the day where I say my still talk. Listen, guys, let me calm myself down. We are not going anywhere, like my brother Tony Africa normally say. He said, we are not going nowhere. And I'm, I'm beginning to believe on him. We are not going anywhere with this. Our mentality, a lot of them have been affected. We are not going anywhere. I understand your anger, Elvis, but I'm saying that it is misdirected. You should be focused on that minister who stole money, not Shell. We need a job. system. Let me tell you, Louis Day. <laughs> The system we need in Nigeria, a system that will interrogate you the same day, the same system will sen uh, sentence you the same day. That's why I'm saying that. We need the dictator that will be for the people. Not I, for I agree people. with you. I agree with you. I wish the police would swing in and do their job, but they won't do that. Mr. Mr. Viz, let me tell you, whatever, whatever that guy has there, whatever the fight said, let me tell you, the problem of Nigeria is for Nigerians to stand up against these people. 
Because if everything happened to, to uh, that guy tomorrow or happened to Erufa, nobody will talk. The show, uh, Supreme Court did, any, some, did what they did. Nobody rise up and against the Supreme Court. That's why evil are happening in Nigeria. Me and you cannot do much. Me and you cannot do much. All of us cannot do much. The Nigerians have to stand up and rise against this evil. Um, let me tell you, APC, I hate APC more than anything in my life. APC was the worst evil thing that happened to Nigeria. Okay? So that, let that be listened to you. Nobody can support those evil people. Nobody. Uh -huh. Unless they be unless a criminal like them. I don't support them. When Rufai asked you, Onoposa, 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 this is what that, the other time. Onoposa, people were defending uh, Onoposa, uh, that Rufai was bullying him. Rufai was bullying him. That's what I was saying. Nigerians, uh, Nigerians are, 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 are and, and evil people. When somebody is doing good, evil people will start defending that evil person. That's the problem. Anyway. That is the problem of Nigeria. Thank you. People are, people are Nigerians are not honest. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody doing anything, we... they're they against that person. Thank you. I, 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 we, I will stop that particular video right there, my people. For anybody that want to continue with that video, please just, just go watch it on our, uh, on channels because that video got me really mad. In fact, I was looking how I can even fast forward the time for us to come on air this evening. To be honest, we all have a long way to go. Uh, if I raise my voice on anybody, I apologize. But the situation of Nigeria is enough for anybody to be frustrated. To be honest, it's, 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 it's really, really disheartening. It's disheartening. This is not a joke anymore. Let me take some articles, my people. Please bear with me. Press on the like button. I post to share. Call us. Hold on. I'll pick calls. Please, just bear with us. Let me finish my job. You know, if you guys start calling in right now, I might not finish... You know this job today please bear with us thank you very much my people I appreciate you all good morning good afternoon good evening to every one of you right there let's quickly do this together let's take some uh i might not be able to take all the articles that i have here today anymore but let's just take what i have for you guys here as you can see uh you know peter will be campaign director uh you know um Director General Doyo Kukwe Dump Labour Party to join APC. Yesterday, it wasn't that clear that it was dumping the Labour Party to go for APC. You see now? So this is what we get with these people. Um, although we have a continuous uh, statement that a former... Now, Ruben Abati, now, you know, and I uh, uh, post this one, you know. A former Director General of Peter Obi Dati Presidential Campaign Organization in the 2023 general election, Doyin Okukwe has formally resigned his membership of the Labour Party LP over ideological differences. I'll leave it right there. We talked about it yesterday, yesterday. Then I have another stuff right here. This one is coming from Sam Amadi. Sam Amadi. Uh, I blame Tinubu. He decided that throughout Nigeria, he couldn't only find her as the best to head such important ministry. Tinubu damaged himself with the uh, appointment he made, top to bottom. Terrible appointments, corrupt and incompetent people everywhere. That is Sam Amadina. They talked that one for their soul. Why Ruben Mambati posted another one? 2027 presidential race begins as opposition hints at major to form mega party. Yes, uh, as you all know, that like I said, uh, Peter Obi is already under pressure. But other people posted this one that the old generation, as you can see, those three faces on top there, and the new generation underneath. Underneath are criminals, as you can see them right there. While we move on, we have another one from here, breaking President Tinobu Summers, Minister of Interior, uh, blah, 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 blah. We've talked about that already. But people reacted to all this. I'd like to quickly take this one right here. Asiwaju Son. President Tinubu's swift response to this issue is top notch. We have, we have a listening president who is ready to take hard decisions. Hopefully, hopefully Tinubu will put all of them in jail. Uh, we have uh, Sebastian. Is it fair to suspend other orders for investigation and then summon one with similar case to Asso Rock? Is that a government that is working? I certainly doubt that. Okay. Blue Moon said, this minister, they try. Haba, why he be say, now him, this matter come, come, come go consign? Well, make them do their investigation. If him guilty, make them lock him up. 
But if in innocent, make them let the guy be. Because everybody like was already liking that guy already. He, he, I'm part of the people that were liking him. But meanwhile, Akamu said, one thing is that that company is an entity on its own. Olubumi, also an entity on its own. He has resigned and proved by documentation. The only thing that can make him part of the corruption is when there's evidence of communication or text for diversion of public fund. While I have another person here, PVC. No mind arm. Um, I see how he became to lie on TV that he was not working there. That will update Nigerians. Only for him to receive money, he no update Nigeria. All of the owner will no go agree for anybody. Because now this country, we day we go die together. Now, PVC now they talk that one. So why I have another one here, which is the last one in responses. Lawrence Samuel uh, saying this. The shareholders are not part of the company's profits. I laugh. Interior minister... He has forgotten that shareholders are part of company interest <laughs> because he was he was contradicting himself. That's why I'm really really disappointed. Because ah, but meanwhile, I like us to move on, my people. I have another. Uh, I I can see somebody's on the backstage. Please just bear with me. I don't want to be distracted this time. Let me quickly pass all the information that I have for everyone here. You know, let me bring this on your screen. Please, guys, do your part. I post to press on the like button as I try to do my part as well. Yeah, yeah, Bello, I'm going to divert a little bit because there's a reason for all this. If I bring them here, there's a reason for it. It's not up for you to, di to digest it. Yeah, yeah, Bello sacks for Kogi monarchs. Appoint new Ohinoi. So governors have right to sack monarchs, right? Okay. Traditional rulers. Hmm. Now, there I go talk and reach. I just make a break that one come there. Uh, let's quickly move on to another one here. Guys, everybody just uh, bear with me. Let me quickly put everything on your screen. You know, uh, I have this one here. How oh, do I burn it? Okay, uh, we have, um, we have something, you know, well, Aisha Yusuf sadly called out our principal. You know, Aisha Yusuf or Yusufu called out our principal that if you come and explain how it is spend money. Okay, 10 months after election, Labour Party presidential candidate Peter will be yet to publicly account for multi billionaire campaign donation. Aisha Yusuf said, Time for the statement of account will be. 30 campaign account to be made public by the presidential candidate who happens to be my president. Hmm. So I'm just going to leave that one right there. You know, it continues right there, but I'm not interested uh, because of time. Not that I'm not interested. Mona goes to change my word because it's always Peter Obina. I know I read them, but I don't have that time. We spend so much time talking about everything, but I'll come back to it later on. Yeah, the, the only surprising part of that is that uh, Acha Yusuf you know, called out our president. Okay. Um, I'd like us to quickly move on to another one that I have for you guys here. You know, uh, I think we've talked about almost everything here. Um, okay. What will happen? I'd like us to move on. Let's move on. If I have other stuff later, I'll break them in because there's a lot of information today, a lot of information. I don't know how I can, you know, carry, if I have to continue to give you all these information, like I normally say to you guys, we have lots of information, you know, a lot of things is going on in Nigeria. We only select the area we want to talk about. So I have, I still have more than 30 here, but I can't take them right now. But if we have time, I'll put one or two in the middle of the conversation. Let me start taking calls right now. Call us, call in. I need callers to start calling in the next 15 seconds. If I don't receive the first call, I'll call on the panelists so that we can take it from here. I really, I can see that a lot of people want to talk on this issue. Every caller that call in, please do two, two minutes so that we can manage our time properly. We already have the first caller right here. Thank you very much, sir, for calling in. Good evening to you. Uh, please, I want you to talk to us. You have only two minutes, sir. Two minutes. Thank you. 
Sir, so you're Hello? not talking. One minute is already out of your two minutes. I'm not talking. I thought you were talking to someone there. Okay. How can I be talking? Hi, you are everybody. watching your telly now. Go ahead. Thank you very All much. Right, if it's, if it's, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, Elvis, I disagree with you in certain things. That's fine. I it's think you be you start giving um Jagaban a credit. How? It's not supposed to be like that. How? Yeah. How you can't tell me. He come from back, yeah, like because of the minister, the mini, the ministry woman, the edu, you know, a, a, a reasonable somebody is supposed to know that. Oh, sir, no, you just, you just said, very, hold on, sir, you hold on, please. You just said something very important. Right. I'm giving Jagaba credit. How? Don't jump it. Let's answer questions. Yeah, because, because of the edu, because of the ministry, you How? say you can do anything, you can make anything and come to the power and do the right thing. No, that's not that's not no, what no, 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 I said, if I can do anything possible to become a dictator to rescue my country, I will do it. Unfortunately, these people there, they are there for themselves. Simple. I've said this to Timothy three times since. I don't know where you, the one where you hear for his side. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, like he said, if yes, he he, he read himself, he do this, you know. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Shinese, Mr. Shinese, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you have opportunity today to rescue Nigeria, anyhow. Will you do it or not? No, not, not, not anyhow. If people put me there, if the masses put me in, I will do it. But I won't read myself to the power. Okay. I start doing things so people will like me. When you read yourself into power, and they want to... I'm talking, to okay, okay, I'm okay. Okay, forget about Tinubu. I'm yeah. telling you about myself. If I have a way today to rescue Nigeria, Anyhow, I can hold the number one office. I will become a dictator okay, to rescue anyhow, my country. Okay, which anyhow is it to rig yourself into the power? Anyhow, I can, oh. I can, I can become a leader to rescue Nigeria today. I will do it, sir. No, Talk no, about no, me. Is, uh, I, on, in everything you have been doing, I, dis I disagree with you on this one. Okay, that's fine. Anyhow, okay, dis disagree anyhow. with me. Disagree please don't mention Tinubu anymore. Yeah. Please disagree with me. I'm yeah, telling you about myself. Thank you. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um. You know, see, I have so many things that are going on in this in, the, in that country. It's 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 all it's beginning all the way from uh 1999. This is what what is happening. It's because of people coming out every day. The way come to the way you come to uh, uh, um, Niger Watch and people come here and start talking, this thing has been happening, but nobody knows. This platform, all this platform that started this recently. Okay, what of the time this platform is not there? This thing is happening. Yes, sir. Uh, but because, because, because be, be, sir, because this has been happening, how do we stop it? Are we going to live with it forever? The way we're going to stop it will not sit inside home. Let me tell you, a country that their, their government are doing it for, and, they will, and the masses won't get up, because that country is doomed. They can't study, they can't carry, okay, when the, when the people comes out, you, you carry, the, you, you bring army, they bring army, and start buying them. So, how is people going to stand up I said no, no for this. So, uh, so but, but how? How are you people going to do it? That's the problem right now. Anyway, let's move on, sir. It's going to start. It's going to start. Not okay. we. Yes, we come out here every day and talking and saying this is how it's supposed to be. Okay. okay. But people back home, you're you're fighting for. And please, sir, before you go, I will also beg you to help us to go and remove Tinubu from there, please. It's very, very important because the way it looks like right now, it looks like I run out of idea. I don't know how to remove him. If you can make any way to remove Tinubu, do it for us. We are dying in Nigeria. Yes, Thank we you. can. We can. We can do it. We okay. Can, uh, but this, but time can. is running faster. Time is running fast. People are dying every day. A, a kidnap is not a lucrative business. You know, killing is not yes, a normal yes, thing. That, so. Yes, th that's true. Thank That's you, sir. True, but we have to. We, all right. All Th right thank, thank you very much, sir. Because of time, let's move on to the next person. I have Jija Breadman with us. Jija Breadman, thank you very much for calling in, sir. Talk to us. Two minutes, uh, please. Sir, yeah, yeah, good morning, sir. How are you doing, sir? I greet you. Thank you. 
Go ahead, sir. And, uh, can you, am I coming out clear this time? Yes, 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 you are good. Yeah, yeah, I want to make a submission on two points. Uh, first of all, Mr. Harvis, I kind of disagree with you in terms of your interpretation with uh, this Mr. Tunji. Uh, I'm not supporting him. You know my position when it comes to the issues concerning Nigeria. But uh, that man, uh, his uh, ministry has been indicted. And uh, he is coming on a public space to make uh, answer questions. I believe that uh, he has the right to... We lost your voice again now. I don't know to how they feel, say they talk. No, 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 you cannot lose my voice. Can but you your voice me? is back now. And why, why we fell lose? Go ahead no. now. I don't like this, man. Yeah, we lost it again. No. Hello? Can you hear me better? Okay, go no, ahead. Yeah, I believe the man is, uh, his, 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 his ministry has been uh, implicated. And uh, he has the right not to self-indict himself. So yes, he has the right. He has to answer questions, but anything that will uh, be used against him in the court of law, he has the, the the right to you know not to divulge that information. And when it comes to shareholding, I mean, I believe most of, most of us have shares in different different companies. That you are a shareholder in the company does not depend on the amount of share, but it does not make you the operators of the company. It doesn't. If the, if the company makes fun, you simply get shares based on how much uh, share holdings that you have in the company. So if the man answers the question that he is not involved in the operation of the company, I think uh, you know I can let him pass for that. But uh, he still needs to answer questions in the court of competent jurisdiction with regards to his involvement with this scandal. Secondly, if you listen to Frank Tete, I listen to Frank Tete when he said that uh, this. Uh, uh, this thing has been going on. It has been the normal practice in the sense that they have a project manager. You have a, 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 a fund for a particular project and you, you put it in a personal account. It has been going on. And he says that the, the, the president, you know, has to interpret it on how he wants to do it. So I go to say that the root cause problem of all these things is the Nigerian constitution. Because the constitution should make a provision for how public fund is to be used and disposed. So if they don't have that, then you see all this thing going on. The problem of Nigeria is the constitution. Okay. Until we address that constitution, which is the, 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 Thank you. the pipeline for all this. Thank thing you, sir. Let's work with time, please. Never be addressed. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Jaja Bredman. Thank you. Call us before I will come back to you guys. Before some people, you know, we are some satanic people here. No matter what you do, they want to change your words. Let me quickly carry you guys along. In case you don't know what being a good dictator. Yes, because maybe it's only the bad dictator some of you know. Let me prove you right quickly. These are the list of good dictators, but I'm just going to come to this particular one, Lin Kwan. Lin Kwan, uh, let me quickly read here. Read this one for you guys, what it means. These are the list of all of them. You know, since gaining independence on 9th August 1965, Singapore in just a few decades has transformed from a relatively underdeveloped and impoverished agrarian society into Asia's most developed nation and one of the wealthiest as a center of aviation, international banking business, tourism, and to mute yourself, please. Well, Who is this? Without due respect, I hope say you know go quote Machiavelli and close one day. Oh, Joe, please, all this stopping me when I'm talking is not nice, sir. It's not nice, to be honest. Let's be honest. Let me finish first now. You just wait. Let me finish. Then you say, I want to say something. Then I'll let you speak. It's not nice. Let me pick the next call. Let's just leave this for now. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, uh, my brother uh, Bright. Thanks for calling in. Please talk to us. Can you hear me? Mr. Bright, are you there? I'm here, bro. Good okay. evening, Mr. Nanja Watch. Thank you very much, sir. Please talk to us. Good evening to you, my brother. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. I've been trying to reach you. Um, I want to greet the house. I want to greet your beloved uh, uh, panelists. Uh, I like your mood this evening. I'm, I'm very impressed because sometimes we have to we have to think outside the bus because Nigeria is beyond the redemption now because the country is already is already gone. 
if anybody wants to sugarcoat it and say uh, this and that and let us be hoping for a messiah, now it's not going to happen. I've been saying this before the election that I never even one day had hope for the election to change the system. Let me go back to the interview that gentleman was having with Shehun. I saw your anger, you know, with the Nigerian media, the way they handle these politicians. You don't blame them because they are all in this, they are all of them are in the same court. Even the Arise and the what you call the one of the Shehun channel, they are the same people. Because these people, they only just bring this politician to get traffic so that people watch their channel and they do their advert. Because in the real mm. sense, in the in the in the countries we live abroad, it is the poly, it is the media that 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 change the game of the society. Once they start poking you, if you are wrong, they will pick you out and the police will take you in and the law will have their course. It is the media that will first of all put a loophole in your system. If you are dirty, they will fish you out. But in Nigeria, they don't do that. They only invite you so that the people will just watch and get busy with talking. They don't do anything. Because how many of these channels have you seen done investigative journalists like the one the BBC just did recently? Even though that one was also just to carry people out of thinking of what is happening in the political realm in Nigeria too. But the system is like that. And you made one, you know, you made one statement like, oh, I will do whatever it takes to get my country back in track, even though you have to pass through the back door to get the power. And some of us are saying, no, you don't have to do it. That we are not tired for these wait. people. You don't no. But the thing is, listen, even we that lives in the diaspora today, go back to the history of some of these countries that we are all enjoying today. The people who made the country great today came through the back door because the country was no more good. They came to the back door and they changed the system for everybody's experiment. So if you think you want to sit down and tomorrow you want another, you want to wait for another 2027 for another election, hold by our neck, and you are hoping to change the system for good, it's not going to be possible. There was once a time when I was growing up in Benin, every Friday or Saturday evening after the national news, the, anybody who was caught in armed robbery, they will bring you, tie the person to the drum, and they will shoot the person on live TV. Exactly. Do you know why they were doing that? Do you, do you know why they were doing that? They were letting the children, because our father would bring us in front of the TV so that we see those armor being killed. Do you know why they were doing those things? Those things? They were not doing it because it was to, you know, to, to put treasure, to, to, this, to put the people into uh, one PTSD, PTSD or something. No, they were trying to let us, the youth, to understand the system that when we go wrong, there is a capital punishment for whatever things you do that has to do with that law. So you yourself, you, you already, your father does not need to tell you. The government already told you that. And when they find you guilty, you are gone. But do you see such things happening today in our society? No. You don't see those things happening again. They've taken everything out. They've made everything seems to be easy, and it is not easy. Like we thank see. you, thank the you. System sir. in Nigeria cannot change until we take it, take the bull like by the horn. Thank you, thank you, thank you, for thank, thank you my thank brother. You. Thank you so much. Listen, guys, listen. For those of you that is waiting to do things well, to pass through the right door to rescue Nigeria, you go grow old, you go die. Your children go, wait, wait, wait. They go grow old, they will die. Nigeria will still not be better. I'm telling you guys, because I've seen it. All we need is a good dictator. Anyhow, you tell rich there, I'm not interested. In case some of you are not getting this, I want to mention the same Tinubu again. The reason why you are hating Tinubu today, the reason why I am hating Tinubu today, the reason why all of us are hating Tinubu today is because of his past record, and he got into office, he's still not doing the right thing. Let's assume as Tinubu ring itself, he am the uh, 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 satanic Mahmoud Yakubu. From that first day, Buhari got the prison. Babagida, for that he wished they don't go carry and put him for prison. Obasajo, he did prison. Good Lord Jonathan, he did prison. Osho Mole, he did prison. Oh, many, I bet you. I know something of now, I'll do to myself for you with your computer now. 80% of now, where they get Tinubu for all the singy praises by now. I'm telling you, but these people normally ring themselves in to favor themselves, their immediate family, and their extended family. They are not interested over the people that is dying in Nigeria. This is why we are crying 
praying for a good dictator. Anyhow you take that, I'm not interested. If you are interested, it's up to you. Be waiting. Keep patient. Keep your patience. Maybe one day it will work for you. Thank you, sir, for calling in. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Two minutes. Oh, I lost you there. Let me pick another call. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tony Africa. Thank you very much. Please talk to us. You have two minutes. Sir. Good evening to you. Hello, sir. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, sir. Go ahead. Two minutes. Thank you. Uh, you know, in my last uh, appearance, um, uh, you know, I, you know, I did. Uh, uh, I will say that uh, our people, they judge the, the that. As you know, I ask a question. So then, our democracy now they want chop, now free speech they want chop. We need somebody to come and somebody like Tinubu who is a thief, and then he knows the people who are also thief. So now let him fit with this work. Make it one hour, you know, because. I don't know why poor I try to be emotional here. You know, what the hell? Organa oh, Jaguar don't talk and before say that uh, the day when he said that they arrest all these big, big weird people, he said he will know what to do. You know, you know, but we don't, like that, that a previous scholar uh, said, he's like the in Germany, Napoleon, all these people were known dictators. Queen Elizabeth I, first. you know, that I've, I've already, um, you know, talked about these issues where they were attacking me at Niger Watch Group and the platforms. But that's only what I want to say, sir. Thank you. you know? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me pick another call. Thank you very much, Mr. Innocent, for calling in. Please, you have two minutes, sir, because we have a, a, a busy traffic right now. Mr. Innocent, off your telly now. Oh, God. Okay, I did that. It's off. Go ahead, sir. You have two minutes. Talk to us. Is that for me? You are the one that called into yeah. the show, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because um, I was calling here because the last time that I called, you know, and I spoke about, you know, we, you know, uh, talking, talking, talking. And then you said to me that I'm in America there, that I should come out and then you guys, you know, you guys will follow me. I'm glad that, you know, you have a, a change of tone today. A change of tone now that you know that action is what Nigeria needs. I am glad. That's the only reason that I'm calling in because you had a, a change of tone, which you know I was saying that you know talk, talk. You said um, the media talk, everybody talk, everybody talk. That if I want to do something, I'm in mean, America there. That I should go to go to Nigeria and go and do something, and you guys, you know, you will follow me. I'm now glad that you now realize that the only talking in Nigeria cannot do anything. Prayer cannot do anything in Nigeria. Now I'm glad that you said if you get into the power by any means, which I which I am glad that you said that. If I get into power by any means, because I'm interested in, in Nigeria being good, we cannot just be saying we want a better Nigeria, we want a better Nigeria, and we are talking and no, no action is followed. I'm glad. That's all I'm calling in for today. I'm sorry. Can't you I see people already attacking me for even mentioning that word? You think I don't have those kind of words inside me or this why? And and so I, I was going to say, let me just stop calling, thank you. you know, checking in on this platform. I'm glad that you 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 now come around. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let me pick another call. Um, Madam Origin, thank you very much for calling in. Please talk to us, man. Good evening to you. Oh, finally. Hey, I thank all the people that spoke before me. Hello, everyone. God bless everyone. Mr. Niger Watch, God bless you. Well, I, when I tell you I like your fire, when the fire comes, it comes good. Thank you. Uh, straight to the point because I don't have time. Flora Shaw, Lord Lugard, Babangida, and the colonial masters. And just mention them. This is just to mention, but a few. Did we authorize them? Who authorized them? The Nigeria people, the Ogonis, the Oduduas, the oh, did they authorize them? So it, what I'm saying is that all for the last 500 years, we have been living for people, it has been a, a, a regime of illegality. And I bring it, I'm gonna just paraphrase, paraphrase it so that I can touch my points. You see, uh, all well-meaning Nigerians, all youth of Nigeria, especially the ones I come here for, listen to me and listen carefully. You see, there is this thing going on. I have the doctor or the, the freeze to Niger and a few of Abadorians, you hear them, they are not bringing in a, a narrative. 
trying to push hey, the young ones at uh, this, at uh, that, at uh, that. We are this successful. The people that they are looking at and they are calling out on uh, youths of Nigeria are the ones that they raised. They are the ones that came, they are the growing arm of the cesspool of evil. So nobody should come and start pushing, oh, Nigerians are this or that. When you have the, when the head is rotten, when a system is rotten, if you don't change a system, if you don't change what is wrong, you are only going to transfer it. If it is not changed or transformed, what's result is a transfer. Now we are saying we refuse this transfer of evil. We need a change. Thank you, Mr. Niger Watch, Thank for you, being angry today. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. God bless you too. Thank you. Let me pick another call quickly. Guys, please just bear with us. Uh, please do your part and press on the like button. I also give the floor for my wonderful people here now to start giving their submission. Mother Deborah, I'm calling you back, please. Thank you, Mother Deborah. Hello. Please talk to us. Good evening to you. You have two minutes. Go straight to the point now. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, good evening, uh, Mr. Nigeria Watch. Good evening to everyone. Just a quick contribution. I just wanted to add to what you said earlier on. What you're saying about uh, why is it that uh, if Tinubu is doing the right thing, that everyone will be good. But I think the problem, why some of those politicians will find it difficult to do things like that is because they themselves, if, if he tries to do anything, most of those other people, they, they've got things on him as well. So they, it's, for example, now, if you know that uh, you, you've committed a crime that one of your friends knows about, they hold something against you, it's going to be very difficult for you to try. Mother and, Debra, uh, Mother Debra, let me quickly come in. When you are a, when you want to be a good dictator, you will be ready to betray a lot of people. <clears throat> I don't know if you get it. I don't want to go deep on it. But what if they have something... Even they though they have anything like against him, that's why he wants to down. become a dictator. He will tie everybody down. We shouldn't be saying this on air. People know what I'm talking about. Many of the countries that you and I are living today, people stood firm to make sure the country works without no re uh, relinquishing power to anybody. You know, but these people don't care about us. Tinubu uh, fraud himself and stole people's money to get there and started enriching himself with the people's money. This is the problem that we have today. Can we ever have the good detector that we are clamoring for? That is the only way Nigeria will work. A good dictator. Going through the legislator, legislator and whatever, Nigeria will not work. Simple. Thank you. I agree Go ahead. with you on that, but don't you think it's only like a military uh like a military uh government that can act in that manner but in this so-called democracy that they are not that we're not really following the right way you cannot there, there are some limitations to what there's the, no limitation if you want to become a proper dictator but because we cannot have it in nigeria all of them are satanic we can't have it with these people that is in power right now I agree with you. I, I know that that's the only way, that's the kind of drastic uh, measure that can change anything in Nigeria because of the of the level at which the system is decayed. I agree strongly with you uh, on that. But then how does that come? The, the military has already been reduced to to nothing. We don't have any kind of strong military uh, presence in Nigeria now that we'll be hoping that we'll do anything like that, like it used to be in the past. So I don't know how that is Thank going you, to happen, but I agree with you that that's the kind of thing that uh, we need to change. Thank you. Uh, a system that is uh, decayed. Uh, Thank you. As, Thank as you, Madam. Deb. Nigeria. Thank you. Thank God you bless you. So much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, call us. I'm done for now. Come back to you guys again later on, please. Let me, okay, Madam Tammy, is, you know, is calling in. Let me quickly take Madam Tammy. Let me call her back quickly. Madam Tammy, please speak on time. Thank you very much, Madam Tammy. Please talk to us. I just, because you caught throughout yesterday, you couldn't give your submission, so I have to call you back now. You have two minutes, okay, ma'am. Thank you, sir. It's Tammy. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, what I want to say is just this. 
the corruption uh, Tunumbu is now like he wants to fight. That is not it. He should resign because from the head to the top is corrupt. Tunumbu cannot fight like corruption, the... Mama. It's not possible. He he, that's what I'm saying. He can't yeah. fight it. That's what I'm saying, sir. He can't fight it. This one they are doing is the more you look, the less you see. That's the way I look at it. He can't fight it because all of them are corrupt. Look at now, uh, uh, giving a minister to somebody that is doing NYC. Is that the system? I've never heard it before. So he can't fight it. So all this one they are doing, they're just playing around. They're just, the more you look, the less you see. I'm so, so hungry because uh, uh, they are not, that's nothing he can offer because he is number one corrupt man. So what is he going to say? At the end of the day, this thing is going to die down. And they will now maybe push her to somewhere else. And that the free saying that they, oh, the youth, the youth, that there are youths Lord is a sign of peace. are ready to do the good thing. These are the youth of the criminals. They are just compensation for after the election. Thank you. That is why it's a time to loot, time to steal. And that's why all these things is happening. And Thank if you, they ma. if they go far in in investigation, many names will be mentioned. But I tell you, it will not go more than that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. God bless well you. Well done. I, I appreciate all of you. What you're doing, God bless all of you. Thank Amen. you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Bye bye. If Tinubu can fight this corruption, we're supposed to no. Be you know what makes you? You know what makes you think like that? Too much who's, for me, bad information. Hello. From who is talking? Friends. What's happening? Black Panther. Black Panther. What's happening? I muted you, now you mute yourself again. You are talking to somebody there. I don't understand. Sometimes, I, you know, it looks like... It, I don't understand, but let's let, let just move on. The problem... I'm going to give opportunity for the people on the panel to start talking right now. But one thing I want everybody to understand is this. The least, do your own research. Almost all of us are educated. Do your own research on your own before you come arguing. Check a country where dictators, good dictators handled, and check how they are doing well today. If you are a good dictator, the country, the people, your people will never let you go. Even when your tenure runs out, they will say, no, you are not going nowhere. The only way, all these follow constitution, follow this, follow this, we are not going nowhere. The constitution is not working. Nothing is working. INEC is not working. We are waiting. We are already doing press up for 2027. 2027 is obviously going to fail. In fact, it has failed in advance. Politically. And everybody said we should be warming up for that. I'm telling you guys, I'm not part of it. If I will be one to run for 2027 with my mood, Yakubu is still there. I will not support him. I'm going to be neutral. For those of you who go, your jump fence, one of the jump fence in advance. I'm already telling you guys right now. Let me start calling on the people on the panel. Thank you very much. Give us a mandate for your time with us. Thanks for your patience as well. Guys, press on the like button. I appreciate your blue shell. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Thanks for your comment earlier on. Thanks for your support. God bless you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, my wonderful people. Let's take it from here. Uh, give us a mandate. You have eight minutes. Everybody, please try to work with your time because we have a lot of traffic right now. Talk to us, sir. Eight minutes. Oh, thank you very much. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, greetings to everyone on the panel and um, comment section. Uh, greetings to everyone, Nigerians all over the world. Uh, greetings to everyone. Um, Shewon Kukwe, um, Dunyo Kukwe, I think um, it's not about matter of ideology, um, Mr. Dunyo Kukwe. And I think I mentioned here yesterday, I, I think when we speak on this channel sometimes, um, Nigerians should please uh, listen um, when we speak on this channel. Um, we don't know it all, but I mean, we speak uh, to fact, we speak to figures, and then we speak to issues as they arise. Um, mentioned here yesterday that either he joined PDP or APC, but it is pertinent that he was gonna go to APC because why? The case that he brought up against him um, is case that he had that he brought up during the election, uh, that money run over, I think, maybe half a, half a billion naira. And I don't think that money was paid. So now if you match that to what um, Adam Soshemola said, um, 
once you join APC, your sins are forgiven. And also, I think it was intentionally planted into into um, Labour Party um, by his um, masters. And then now he's done his bidding. He's going to leave. He's going to go to APC because he wants his sins to be forgiven. That half a billionaire will just go into the drain. Welcome to the world of Adams Oshiemole, APC um, machine. Once you join APC, your sins are forgiven. Doing Okupe's sins will be forgiven in some few months to come. Welcome to Nigeria. Welcome to APC. Welcome to a country where corruption rules and thrives. What a shame. What a shame. I, I mean, it's not surprising. I think it was mentioned yesterday, just to reiterate what, uh, what we mentioned yesterday. Now, Patu told me, uh, Nigeria has no democracy. Um, well, you can say that, that Nigeria has no democracy, uh, maybe because of our constitution. But um, I, I think, I, Rufai, thank you very much again today for doing a good job and then dragging Patu told me. Nigerians, be wise. You have people that speak Queen's English. They are professors and they are historians. They speak history. They speak great English. But do they actually love the country? I think this year's election would have proven that most of these people don't love Nigeria. I will only wait to see how this whole thing plays out. But I mean, to his own statement, Nigeria has no democracy. And then also, Nigeria has the issue of legitimacy. Because the person that you have there in power today, um, in quotes, and don't forget that word in quotes, whenever you hear me speak, and you may, uh, we talk about presidency, it is in quote because that guy did not win the election. He only stole and then ran with it. Well, um, Nigeria is in trouble. Nigeria is in a quagmire. Nigeria is going to, um, until something is done, Nigeria is going to keep going down. Now, better you do, well, there is no standard. There is nothing in place. And I think it just boils down to the fact that we have to come back to this Minister of Interior. I was pessimistic about him from the very first day he was mentioned on this panel. And I told you guys, just wait and see. And I think you are not waiting too long to see what is happening today. That company, they know why they brought him into the ministry. He has a company, go retire from that, go turn in your resignation from that company. But also we can use you as a medium to get our SPV done through that organization. And don't be surprised. You may be seeing what is going on in the humanitarian ministry. I bet you go check on the interior ministry. Maybe times 10 of what is happening in the humanitarian ministry, ministry would have gone under the drain, but they camouflage you. Oh, all of the passport backlog has been released. Oh, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing the portal system. Hey, all over the world, he's doing a new thing. It is not new, Nigerians. It is not new to have a portal system. UK have a passport portal system. Ghana, even African, African countries have passport portal system. It is not a new thing. Are they supposed to do it? Yes. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but from the very first day here, I said it, this guy is going to be in the hot mess. And then you have it to, you have him today in the hot mess. Frank Titi, um, well, well said. The only place I'll fault you, Frank Titi, is the fact that Regardless of whatever they have in that ministry, Tunumu cannot do anything because he himself is a criminal. And so this begs on the fact that when you talk about benevolence uh, detectorship, I posted something here. Maybe people can read the article. <laughs> you cannot get anything good from bad. I'll leave that. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Uh, that's your opinion. That's my opinion. Uh, we can leave that for a further discussion in the, in the future. That it frees. Well, I mean, to you, um, you may have spoken, say the youth. Now, if you now bring, now look at John, uh, look at uh, Emmanuel uh, Macron, look at Zelensky, 
younger people all over the world. Look at your Minister of Interior. How old is he? Look at your Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. How old is she? Compare their age to Macron. Compare their age to Zelensky. Nigeria has a problem of humanity. People have lost their conscience. People are not standing for the truth. People are not standing for value. They only stand for their mentors, people that train them on how to steal, how to loot, and they continue to loot. So, Larry Freeze, I, I, I don't agree with you. You have more youth in, Nigerians that, in Nigeria that are standing for the truth. I mean, you have someone like Mr. Helvis here. He has given his own channel. He's, he's still standing. Even though they bring some juicy reward to him, he will tell them he knows how to to push them away and then it's time for the Nigerian people. So, um, and then on that, uh, Shane was asking the question, well, Shane has a loss, he has a, um, a safe landing for these politicians because whether you believe it or not, envelopes exchange hand at the end of these things. Rufai is doing what he's doing and don't only see what Rufai is doing on Arise. See what Rufai does outside Arise TV. Rufai do more outside Arise TV than what he than what he does on Arise TV is doing. Exactly. Exactly. Rufai, I can testify to that. Rufai does more. Um, I don't know how many of you were able to see the video that he posted some few days ago. Um, how to innovate education. Um I think he was talking to the youth. He was singing to them, and he paddy me about when you just to get them energized, and then he started speaking. Rufai, Rufai does more outside his daily job than he does in our eyes. Rufai builds, he builds a school. I mean, maybe educational center for his own people. Rufai do more. He does more. So you cannot compare Rufai and Shem. Their principle, their value, their belief system is different. Shenwin is doing what he's doing for his own ideology and his own value. Rufai is doing what he's doing for his own ideology and his own value, so you cannot compare them together. Rufai is passionate for his country, and that's why he will, he will ask that man that was speaking in Arise, eyes, your party stinks. You know what it means to tell a man that your party stinks in Nigeria, and then you, you can still go back home and then put your head on the bed and then still go back to that, to that same channel the next day? Rufai is not afraid of any of them. And he just said it. APC stinks. And it stinks like what? It stinks like the criminal, the drug baron, the one that has FBI case file on him because that man stinks. He stinks of corruption. He stinks of stealing. He stinks of snatch it, grab it, and run with it. APC stinks. As much as Tinumbu stinks and Buari stinks. And don't be surprised. Tinumbu told you he came to dance and he came to continue on Buari's legacy. He is dancing, and Nigerians are seeing his dance. And part of the dancing is that they will use those ministries to siphon money. Shibina, the one way you see now, you talk about. Do you guys know that during this Christmas that just passed, do you know how much they spent for palliative? 57 billion era was spent for palliative for Christmas. Hey. Dr. CM, how many people get bag of rice in the local government in Anambra? Maybe is a question for a next time to answer. So people, APC stinks as much as Tinumbu stinks. Nigerians, rise. Take your nation back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother. I'm so happy. Uh, you know, once in a while like this, you take on everything that I presented. Wow. Now, God bless you, my brother. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, uh, my people, let's move on. Press on the like button help us to share. I appreciate every one of you. I want a lot of people to speak on the panel. Then I'll come back to calls again. A lot of you are still calling in. Please hold on. I don't pick more than uh, seven or eight calls already. Please let me focus at least about six or seven as well on the panel. Then I'll come back to call us again. I'd like to move on now to the next person, which is... Um, uh, Mr. Olumide. Mr. Olumide, thank you very much sir, for your patience. Uh, if you're available, please talk to us. Yeah, um, I'm available. Are you, are you busy? Uh, no, 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 I'm available. Okay, sir. Go so, ahead. Um, 
Okay. Um, okay, Elvis. Uh, good day, and good day to the fellow panel. Okay, where do I start from? Okay, let me let me let me address the issue of contention between the two of us. So, so, so what I was trying to explain to you is that I I wasn't trying to absolve the Minister of Interior <clears throat> of any guilt or any complicity in in anything. So, uh, what I was trying to let you know is that. I mean, Hume, if, if it was the same interview you played that we all watched, Hume asked all the necessary questions. Yes, he was trying to dodge questions and not being straight. But I mean, I think he, he, he asked all the appropriate questions he could have asked. Everybody is different. Everybody has their own style. You understand? So, so I mean, I, I'm not going to compare Hume and Rufai. You understand? I'm not going to I'm not going to come here and do that and compare two different personalities. It will be it will be very very unfair. <clears throat> so I just felt I mean for me he asked all the necessary questions that he should have asked that I that I felt maybe needed needed answers to. But what we want is for forensic investigation to be done. So what I mean by forensic forensic investigation, the police should do all that they need to do, whether it's police or the EFCC. You understand? So he said he resigned from the CAC in 2019. I mean, call, call, I mean, they should investigate to see if this was through, or, or, or was it just an afterthought? Was it, is it just something that they already did just to cover up whatever is going on? Let them check the CAC records to, or find out from CAC if indeed it truly divested himself from the, from the company, from the day-to-day -day management of the company. Um, and, and then, also, there, there are other ways they can find out. He claims to have left the company, to have divested from the company since 2019. So, is he, is he, is he been signing checks? These are things that there are so many questions you can ask and question. Has he been signing checks? Has he been, you understand? So, otherwise, it will be a conflict of interest. And, 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 and for me, it is even mind boggling that you would pay such an humongous amount for consultant consultancy for poverty alleviation. I mean, it's crazy. It doesn't even, the office is even bad. It's bad. What are all the ministries and departments? They, they can source, they can source for, for, for help or source for resources within the Nigerian government itself. So what is the Madam Minister of um, Humanitarian Affairs trying to organize? That they cannot use, they can't use the Ministry of Labor and Productivity. They can't use um, the Finance Ministry, Ministry of Finance, to help monitor transfer of funds to the individuals that need that. Need that. I mean, there are so many ways that they can work inter interministerial work between themselves to to save government money and make sure that they are properly and efficiently utilized. So for me, this this consultancy nonsense is just a way to siphon people's money and steal people's money. So there are so many ways that we can look at this, and the offices are very, very bad for for all of those involved, you know. So, so I'm not I'm not trying to absolve anybody of any blame or any 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 um, investigation. And then, as per Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, see, the full extent of the law should be followed. She should be investigated. If found culpable, whoever all, all those involved found culpable, you understand. Should be should, should be brought to book with the full extent of the law, but we don't just want we don't want sacred cows. What is that? What has happened over time and over the years is the issue of sacred cows, where some people from certain parts of the country are untouchable. So if 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 they should make sure that everybody who has been involved in stealing the people's money, whether you are from the south, the north, the middle belt, whether you are you are a royalty, whether you are a this. That is the only way you can make sure that the law applies to everyone. This is what applies in the part of the world that we all live in, majority of us that are here. The law is an ass. It's no respecter of person. You break the law, you face the consequences. So this is what I expect that should be done. So any not now, whether whether you have you are you are imam, you are pastor, you are this, you've broken the law, you fail, face the full extent of the law. So she they shouldn't just make a scapegoat out of her for nothing. You understand? So fine. I mean, make a scapegoat of her, fine.
but you should make sure that anybody from any part of the country who breaks the law should face the same consequences. Whether you kill somebody and you think you will go scot free, um, whether you steal money, there are different forms of. See, when you say the society is corrupt, I agree with you. There are people who who have retired today from government service, and the people in charge of releasing this their retirement fund will not do that until they collect something, a certain percentage from their salary. These are ordinary people, ill treating ordinary people, stealing from ordinary people. This is not the president. But the president needs to show example, the executive and those elites, those are the higher echelon of our society need to show example so that the small ones will know that it is not a joke. But when, when, they, when they don't show example, the little ones we will continue to cheat ourselves and, 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 and ill-treat ourselves in different, different ways. Because when you block somebody's salary, when you block somebody's um, retirement benefit after how many years of working and you want a certain percentage, this is what we do to ourselves. The executive must lead by example and must show so that the people will respect and obey the law. This is what a good society is built upon. And, and and then again, I was going to talk about um, one other issue that you you raised. Um, she is my memory now. So 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 it's, it's very important that um, and then you were talking about see um, Elvis. See, dictatorship is not fashionable. I understand where you're coming from, but dictatorship is not is not is not fashionable. Many people, I see, we we all want a better society. Majority of us here who want a better society, but it's the different ways that 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 we, we it's the, the ways that we want to achieve it that we differ upon. You want it by dictatorship or something that you just said now. I want my own country where we are free to govern ourselves because of the complexities of Nigeria's multi-ethnic society and one ethnic group trying to lord lord everything over the rest of us. And that some people want a free and fair election. Some people want, so if, so we all we all we all we all want the same thing, but a different. A different way, but we all know dictatorship is not fashionable. But the reason why people are clamoring for this is because they have not allowed their uh, democracy to work in the way that they should work. Because some people still want to continue to steal our resources. You understand? This is this this all boils down to to having a free and fair election. If we have a free and fair election that the people want, that means that the people choose their leaders that they want. You won't have criminals who, in the first instance, supported the rigging and 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 they lobby to be ministers because they know that they, they want to steal anyway and they're not there in the interest of the people because we've not allowed people who really want to serve the people to be there when they know there are consequences in a free and fair election where then after a couple of years you mess up you get out but they know that there's no consequences they will rig anyway and then the, the issue of age see i don't think age matters in when we when it comes to competency this is all about competency it doesn't matter whether you are old whether you are young there are old people today that there are people today that they were once young and today they've grown older but they never allow them to get there because they know that these people will do right it doesn't mean that they are corrupt it doesn't mean that see if, if, if somebody who is older is able to do a good job and it's competent competency just means you're, you you know you know your job and you do it right and in a proper way. So I, I think age is secondary. Age just has to do with the fact that if you if you don't have the strength, the cognitive memory, or you don't have the wherewithal to do it anymore, age becomes a factor in that. But there are people who are <laughs> aged who can do a, a better Thank job you. than even a younger person. So Mr. Lube, when you say when you say the, the, somebody unmuted himself, this is not Lumi Day. Hello, I now let me. Please don't unmute yourself. It's only between me and I'm only there for now. Please, thank you. You said dictatorship is not fashionable. So That's what right. can you not say with Singapore? Because I have when, all of them. I have lots of list here, but just that was, answer that was one. that was back then. That was back then. You understand? It was back then. You are talking about a guy who came in the sixties. You understand? Who who took over the country? I don't know what particular year. What was back then got to do with postmodernism? But I'm saying that in today's world, dictatorship is not fashionable. You understand? How? You understand? It's not fashionable in the sense that you need to be a dictator to roast all these people alive, people that force us pains. 
I, I, Without I, that, it will not happen. But but what is the guarantee that that man that you want to be a dictator will not turn bad? That is why I said we need a good dictator. But how do you know a good dictator? And you don't know. Let it just happen. It's a prayer. Let it happen. That's all. That's all. We can. This is how you people clamor for democracy. Soon are they enjoying our democracy now. So, 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 me, in, me, me, I'm, me, I'm clamoring for my own sovereign nation now. Um, Let's um, move on. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you very much. I'll, I'll come, I'll come back to you, Mr. Sure, Lennon. sure, no problem. All right, let me go to Madam Nena. Madam Nena, thank you very much for your patience with us. Uh, before that, uh, Mr. Lu um, Mr. Omashola, I know you're on the backstage. When it gets to your time, I'll swap somebody for you, you know. Uh, the, the script already full, but it can still take more behind. So, um, Maranena, if you're there, please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Please work with time. You know, say sometimes yeah. when I try to stop you, you say, oh, my time, don't <laughs> now. So, work with your time. Eight minutes. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Service. God bless you. Um, anyway, I at some point when we're talking about uh, uh, our protocols of that, please, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone on this day. Yeah, listen, you know, what? Well, when you were talking about this uh, dictatorship and everything, it's like I was trying to have a little bit, maybe in the course of the discussion, I think I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit of an understanding of what you meant. Because at some point I was thinking if, you know, we, if we are not trying to change the narrative to say that the end justifies the means, you know, it's just like, you know, at the, at the initial time, we, uh, the concept I have, this concept we all have, that we have expressed over and over in this place is that it doesn't matter that someone stole your, stole what belongs to you, it doesn't matter how well they keep it, it still does not change the fact that they stole it, you know. So at, at some point, I'm like, okay, are we trying to say that exactly. even, even now at this point that um, Tinubu um, got into power the way he got into power with every baggage that he has with him, so if eventually he turns out to be doing things right, then we can now say, okay, finally he's doing something right. Okay, let's just forget the way he came in. And then for me, I, so I don't I don't care how, how well Tinubu transforms Nigeria. Tinubu is still who Tinubu is. He's a thief and I will never for one person applaud him and applaud the way he came into power. That is my own personal perspective. I don't care. I don't know about another person. Whatever Nothing Tinubu good does, can ever come from APC. Whatever he does, for me, for one person, I have, I have not, I've never, and I can never applaud him because it's like you, just like we say, somebody stole what belongs to you, takes it, takes good care of it, and it's okay. At least he's taking good care of it, it's fine, it doesn't make it right. Anyway, so at this point, I think we're beginning to understand because at first, when you were talking about, oh, take it anyhow, you, how you get into that place, long as you do something, I'm like, wait, what is the way Steph is talking, trying to talk about? I think now I'm beginning to get a little bit of um, uh, perspective of what you're saying because me, I can never subscribe. No, it was totally, it was totally different from that. Oh, you know? yes, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That in the, at first, that was the concept of because if you look at the conversation, I made a comment, I'm like, okay, are we trying to change? Narrative now, but in the course of conversation, I'm beginning to understand where you're coming from, which is also, you know, goes to um, I think it was Madame Rita that always used this word, we need cleaners. You know, if we can have a dictator who will come in and be a cleaner, wipe out things and begin to make things happen, change things. A I mean, proper cleaner without nepotism. Exactly. A cleaner who will not look at faces, who will not mind who is who. Well, what we need is to clean and let's let things work. That is what we need in a society that 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 like Nigeria at this point, you know, that that will make a whole lot of difference, and that is what we are praying and wishing that yeah, we, that we can. I mean, how how do we how can we get such person or such people who will take the bull by the horn and say, you know what? At this point, we need to try start throwing stones. We need to try doing what start doing what we need to do in order to get these people, not even to make them change because they can never change. Nothing can nothing good can ever come out of the devil, but to take them out of the system. Anyways, that is what that is. Um, uh, uh, what we wish and that is what we pray and that is what we hope that we'll be able to do that is what nigeria needs at this point wiping wiping and cleaning and come starting all over and then we come to the issue of um the yokube you know remember yesterday when the issue of the, the yokube came out you know i, I miss uh, give us a mandate i'll say this very well and that is exactly what it is you know i'm not surprised that we are coming out at this point to hear that he's moving to apc he is going there for his sins to be forgiven. And you ask yourself, what is even this man's pedigree in the first place? What has been his ideology? Uh, for they say that he left because of ideological difference. I don't want to dwell so much on that ideological differences. I said it yesterday. It must have been that this person may be one of the people that are trying to push P2B to compromise, and P2B doesn't want to compromise. So they are, I, they began to have that ideological clash. That is my own personal assumption. I, I, it, might, it might not be what it is, but they say it's ideological differences, which means their ideas at some point is no longer much 
he decided to go where he thinks his ideas are, are sustainable. He's well and good because at this point, I would be so disappointed if for any reason, someone like Pete would be, and a, lot, a few people, I always use a few because the truth about it is that when it comes to the issue of Nigeria they are this, at this point in time, it's like there are, there are few, very few, you know, people of, 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 of good intent and good um, desires for, for, for genuine change in Nigeria. That includes majority of the people that comes on this panel and some other people and the like of people. So if I will be so disappointed if I see people like that to begin to compromise because of situations. And I think somebody, I think I don't know if it was on Arise or where that I was listening to that somebody made a comment that's similar to that. That's saying that because of the situation of Nigeria today, you see a lot of a lot of compromise. Okay, I think no, sorry, I think it was this man of God I was listening to to this apost uh, um, apostle Selma. You know, I was listening to the says in this 2024 that people will be so surprised to see a lot of because of hardship and because of situation that people you never expected to to compromise a lot of people will see a lot of a lot of you know surprising compromises and it was only those people who stood who will stand their ground to say respective of what happened just like esther said in the bible if i perish i perish this is where i stand this is what i stand. because at the end of the day like pato tommy said i'm just touching on pato tommy's way he said at the end of the day what will you be remembered for when i was listening to his interview he brought me back to what mr uh, uh, mr vc always say here at the end of the day what is that thing you'll be remembered for it's not about how much wealth you uh, you, you acquired it's not about how much thing but at the end of the day what is your ideology I, I, I was trying to push him trying to remind him there was one of the people that started apc of course he did and he made it very clear i started this because i thought it was going to be the genuine and the sincere change that we needed in nigeria but when he got in there he realized that the people he's dealing with does not have the same ideology it still comes about boils down to what somebody stands for this is not what I expected. The kind of thing that these people are doing, the kind of thing way they want, they want to make this change. It's not what I believe in. He quietly walked away. You know, he walked away. Do you don't blame such a such, such person? That is the way I, for one, interpreted. Like oh, how I summarized what everything he said. As much as Rofai tried to, you know, to drill him to make him realize that oh, you were part of APC. Yes, he never denied the bed. What happened? You he went into it. He, after all, Peter B was in, was in a, a PDP. He went into the a, a, into the mainstream and he realized, look, this if I continue here, this is going to dent me because this is not what I believe in. I still want to believe that there are still one or two few people. I'm saying I'm trying, I'm saying using the word few in APC today who are still not as corrupt as a lot of them are. But unfortunately, the 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 the, the the wave of corruption in APC is so is so wide that it blankets even if there is one or two that may you know, may, may be one or two people of integrity. So that is just the way I see the whole thing. So that is me addressing the issue of Pato Tommy's DC. Everything Pato Tommy said there message and it resonates with me. And I, I, I want to I want to strongly believe that somebody like that will stand, will keep stand the test of time, irrespective of the pressure that you know that mounts and that comes along people like that. First, the light of Gimbe, let him go with the waves. I mean, let him go with the waves, let him go where he wants to go. If, if, when people make such moves, it tells you what their intention was, even from the beginning. You know, it takes a man with integrity to stand to the end, to say, no matter what happens, this is where I need to stand, and this is what Nigeria needs. The truth about it is that there's so much evil that is going on in the country called Nigeria. There's so much corruption. There's so much, you know, so much. The, the government of uh, Tinubu, there's so much of, um, I, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find the word, so much, so much, so much evil or whatever that's going on there and that's that the cabinet is filled with so much of incompetent people who does not have a clue or an idea and these are people who are just there because they have seen that over the years is oh my god eight minutes is gone already <laughs> all right okay i'll just stop here let me just obey the bell anyway i have a lot to say but let me just stop here thank you so much mr Evis. thank you thank you thank you madam nena thank you very much um We'll come back to you. The way we're taking it right now is going to get to everybody's on time. Thank you very much for that um, analysis. Um, yes, my stand on dictatorship is that the only way Nigeria can work, if we want it to work legitimately, so many angles will allow it to work. That is just the truth. They are going to give you trouble upon trouble upon trouble. We need somebody that will come in that will not have no friends. I will just take everything on its own. But which I know this dream 
doesn't look like something that will, that we can actualize. But that is my wish. Somebody that will come in will not have any friends at all. You know, will not have any friends, will not have anybody. We will just take action and fix the country. Anybody that try to step on his toe, you know, wrongfully or step on the toes of the people, you know, we go. In fact, you people should know what I'm saying now. Well, let me kind of confess for you. You should know what I'm saying. If not, a lot of things is wrong in Nigeria. A lot of things is wrong. If one to fix them legitimately, I think we still have a long way to go. Thank you very much. Uh, let me call on the next person to quickly speak to us. Uh, I'm taking it turn by turn. Uh, then, um, Mr. Consign, the former director. Uh, Mr. Consign, please, I would like you to talk to us. I'll mute yourself. Good evening to you, sir. Thanks for your patience. Eight minutes. Uh, good evening, my brother, Elvis. Thank you, sir. Good evening, our panelists. I apologize yeah. how I responded to you earlier, sir. You know, uh, say, no problem. Yeah. It, it, the problem you didn't know me very well. You don't know that I, that I hate the APC more than anything in my life. Uh -huh. Even if uh -huh. even if I uh, arise news, even I will stop watching it because when I'm watching that arise news in the morning, they will see a picture of Utini Budia or picture of Usodinjo. That is evil. When you see those pictures, even your business cannot go again. So, but that is by the way. You see, my bro APC is not only that is corrupt, but it's evil. And the other day I said, nobody is in nobody in APC is a, a real human being. Nobody. I don't see anybody in APC that you can say this was a bit okay. Nobody have not. That's the problem of it. And all the whole in a party that all evil people are running to, all evil people are running to, and they become saints. So that's where the problem is in Nigeria. That is why, and now you are talking, sir, because yeah. at that particular time, I told you were indirectly supporting them. That's why I said no. No, this that's is the last thing I can do in my life. Thank you. That's Thank the last thing I can do in my life. If you, need, if you let me tell you, some of these boys that talk in flip television, I send the credit, I send the money every time to continue to, to push. I do it from here. You can ask some of them. So, but I'm not trying to promote myself, but the thing is that I am trying to work hard. My honestly speaking, I'm trying to work, work. I work hard myself to see that Nigeria can be okay the way I can, the, 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 the way I can, but I cannot keep myself. So let me begin from Kogi State to Governor. That is where that evil is coming. Now, the problem when we are growing up, we know how we are growing up. The, 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 the chiefs, the traditional rulers have power. And they were that time, they were able to say the truth. But this these political parties now, or these evil people, are coming to to do evil things on, on uh, to remove them and put those that they can say what, what they like, like what happened in Imo State and other states. That is where the problem. That is where that conquer is going. This APC is conquering everybody. They have conquered the Senate. They have conquered the Supreme Court. They have conquered the judiciary. Everything. If the if the king, kings traditional rulers are caged. So what again do you expect for in a country? Now, for this uh, president, so th that election before, I want to say what I know from my investigation, the thing, it's not that I neck, Tinibu bribe I neck. No, the thing is that the caliphate want Tinibu. If you can see the time that Buhari wanted to go out, Buhari wanted uh, this uh, Senate president that's when they planned it. They planned it that that Senate man, the former Senate president, will be there. But when the Afani Ferre, the Ohaneze, the South South leaders stand up and said, if an, another Fulani man goes there, the country will be divided. We never agree for that, to that. That was why this uh, Rufai and all those uh, former Kanu governor and all, the, all those Islamists, they went and they convinced Buhari. Okay, let's think, let's put in Ibu. This is the one we can control. This is the one that can continue our agenda. That was why Tinibu came into that place. And that was why all the things they did, they put Tinibu there. I know that Tinibu may he has may, may bribed that uh, the INEC man, but this is the agenda of these people. This is what APC planned. They plan to put Tinibu, they plan to put anybody somebody that they can carry on the agenda. And what is the agenda of the North? To continue to dominate the country, to continue to so that the country cannot, uh, the, the constitution cannot be changed, the con the country cannot be restructured. Now I want to call on these leaders again, because last time they stood up last two weeks, the last week here, this 
leaders to the stood up again and said Tinibu should try to uh, to talk uh, to work on the on the security of the country. Now I want to if the if those leaders, Clark, Park Clark, all of them, how they grew up, they know how their forefathers, what their fathers leave for them, and they know that the country cannot continue to go on like this. So for me, if they want one Nigeria, if they want that country to be good, let them also come and come together with the Middle Belt leaders, all of them, Afghanistan, all of them, let them come out together and say, Tinibu, we give you six months to restructure the country or to change the constitution and to see how we can stop corruption. If you don't do it, the country will, will, will go a separate ways. So let us see what will happen. That is my, my, own, my own opinion. No? If they want the country to be good, let them give tribu, let them tell him, restructure this country, change this constitution. If you don't do it, then we are not with you. We have to, we, we, everybody will have to go on his, on his own way. Because what I see today, is not that even the police or what. My brother, if we, today I was even asking somebody, is if we're not living in Nigeria, how can men sleep with their daughter? Prostitution is more than anything now. Evil things are happening. People are, people are buying people. Children are buying, buying their fathers. Fathers are buying children. So when all these things, when you look at all these things, you see that the country, my brother, is going nowhere. If the country is not restructured, if the good things are not coming, if the the foreign the foreign partners are not coming to the, the, to industrialize, help the country to industrialize, my brother, what we are seeing now is just a, 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 a is just a, a, is just an iceberg. What we are seeing now, what we see within two months, three, what we see within next year, even before the year goes finish, it will be worse. So let these leaders come together and give Tinibu. So that Tinibu can see what if they can if they can uh, do something. But if not, let the people everybody go on its way. Because like this, this Singapore you are talking, Namibia you are talking, Botswana you are talking. Those places they, they are small. They are not big in Nigeria. Nigeria is just big for nothing. People say Nigeria is very rich. It is that. What makes a country is not richness. What makes a country is the stability. That's what makes a country. How you you able to take care of your people? The social security system, everything. That's what makes the country. What you can't be in a very big bogus country and people are dying. If things are happening, when I traveled before earlier, I you, you can't imagine a, a Nigerian say a Nigerian man can rape or a Nigerian people can rape. We have, we we fight you in, in that place, but now that is what is happening in Nigeria. Then coming to this uh, the what did the, the Edu Edu like what the other guy said. If you want to investigate, investigate everybody. Bring everybody to book. Buhari, bring him to book. Abba, Kiare, this Kiare, the one in head of this thing. Let them bring all of them. There are many. And the man is the Minister of Interior. What is the Minister of Interior? What's the work of the Minister of Interior? The work of the Minister of Interior is not only a bad passport. No. It's not a bad passport. That's Nigerian side. So gullible. If somebody does what they say, no, he has right. Minister of Interior is about the security of the internal, internal security. Do we have internal security today? If anybody is giving that man kudos, eh, the man is trying. What is the man doing? Minister of Interior is not about, it's not a bad passport. No, that's nothing about, the, the main thing is about, what is the police doing? Is the man taking care of the, is checking the police what they're doing? And other security, internal security agencies. People are buying every day in Nigeria. What is he doing? So I don't see anything good in coming out from any of these ministers. Nothing, and I cannot give them kudos. If whatever they do, unless, um, well, it's difficult. Then when you come to, what did the other man, um, the other man from, the one that uh, Rafael interviewed, well, that man, for me, I will not exonerate him, but from the what the other lady said, yes, he, he was part of the PC. Being part of the PC, when you see that there is rot, when you see that this is not way to envisage to make that decision, then you have to leave. And I, I respect him for his views, I respect him, because even up to today, He's trying his best to see that things can work. But like you said earlier, Nigeria working is not about me and you. We can help by talking. We can help by doing everything. We can help by supporting those in, the, in that place. But the most important thing is that let the people rise up. If the people doesn't rise up, or if somebody who can change the system doesn't come, my brother, we cannot go to you. And again, if anybody comes to change the system, what of the caliphate? 
in Singapore, Singapore has a different people. They are, they are, they are just to the, like Chinese. Singapore are not Chinese, and they, that's all. But in Nigeria, different ethnic groups, which is which is a problem. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your um, information. All right, let me call on Madame Rita. Thank you very much, my sister. Thanks for your patience. Please talk to us. Good evening to you. Yeah, good evening. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Elvis and everyone in the panel. I'm Amit Diaspora and Mr. Joseph Oji. If you're watching, I hope you're doing very well. Um, I didn't watch most of the videos. It's just a few of them, but I will just speak on the ones that I want to talk about. Um, the one about, um, you know, this story about Beta Edu, Tundi Ojo, and the like, and the Madame Farouk, and what's the other one, Halima Shehu, um, misappropriation of funds and transfer of funds to personal accounts, I would say is a distraction. It is a distraction to what's really going on underneath in the country. It is a distraction. But however, we have to speak about it because we got to speak about it. We have to. But I see it as a distraction because, you know, this president, okay, what, can anybody audit Fashion last minute when he was a minister for uh, roads and works, or works and transport? Those trains that they bought in Lagos, those roads that he said he built, the bridge and all that, as, and when they start auditing past ministers, then I will start to hear, then I would, I would say, okay, let us talk about better Edward and, and her ilk. They haven't probed them. So what's all this bula balu, all this noise about Beta Edu? I'm not saying this to justify that what they did or what they allegedly did, you know, was to transfer of uh, public funds to personal accounts. No, don't get don't get it twisted. You know, we can't be hip hypocritical, you know, when we when especially in the Nigerian government, when we see someone like Tunji Ojo, let's say Beta Edu now that's popular, we cannot be hypocritical judging her right now in fact the government itself cannot because let us i just mentioned just one fashion last ministry it was the minister of works and transport can we audit it can we verify that those trains those useless trains in lagos state that they say okay they started a light rail or whatever is going to last for the next 20 years what is the lifespan of those what is the quality of the products I know that some civil engineers here, if they go to Nigeria and then they see the kind of products that they used to be rail and the train, they will just laugh. In this modern day, look at the kind of, in fact, that's what they use in uh, Disneyland, like tram, as far as I'm concerned. So please, the titles issue Nigerians, I just want to say it, it's a distraction. It is a distraction. They are sucking us dry. They are sapping off Nigeria's energy. Everything that that makes Nigeria, they are sucking us eye. Do is just fighting maybe one girlfriend or one somebody. One side chick is fighting and say, I will expose you. Or Madame Farouk's former staff, maybe they don't like her attitude or because she's forming, we are the villa or Edu, Edu group. So let's say, let us show her pepe. That is what is happening. All the ministries in Abuja, all of them, check it out. I've said it before in this panel. If you go to the federal ministries in Abuja right now, the people that you see there, working there, those young people, Young people that you see they're working there, most of them are children of the caliphate. They schooled in ABU Zaria or somebody, let's say Sokoto. They'll do their masters in, uh, in London or lead somewhere in UK. They come back, they take them straight to the federal ministry. Give them 15 to 20 years. They're all head of service, all of them. I see it because I know what I'm saying. There's a lot of distractions here, my people. It's, see, eh? it's a distraction. And then um, the question she was asking about you know, I, I think what I was saying there, um, Sir Elvis, was, you know, he, he basically was asking, should money from the humanitarian ministry pass through your company? And uh, uh, even as a former director, as he claimed, money should, why is it that, okay, if they bid for so many companies, why is it that it's your company, coincidentally, that's being picked where this money from humanitarian ministry is passing through? Why? They should not, they should not fall in Nigeria. If I told you, just should go and, you should enter house. He should enter house. He should not come here and look sanctimonious to try to pontificate himself like, oh, he's just he's a clean guy. He's clean. Look at my papers. You're bringing that. Man, who is he fooling? Nigerians cannot be fooled again. At least majority of Nigerians, as far as I know. Or oh, rather, not even majority, because some are still very gullible. If you look at all those uh, street questions you ask people in the street, 
at least 70 percent are still gullible they don't really know what's going on and i don't blame them there's no electricity to even or there's no there's no incentives for even free wi-fi to them to know what's going on in the world or in their country how many of them are able, able to watch arise tv or even like that watch? today on the comment session on another on in another platform telling me that now let's enable the thief money whether other people never felt thief money before so many of them are gullible so imagine that kind of mental that means it's you're kind of validating stealing like is okay i don't thief money okay this one picking thief money now and eh, waiting upon a bag no that is why i said something if we want to start talking about better edu now let us start with just one ministry i'm not going to talk about the nddc that's a that's a different kettle of fish on its own let's just talk about fashion last the one that he was heading with the monies that passed through there so they should all of them should enter house I mean, that in fact they are disturbing us with all this sensational news better edu and nigerians are falling to it showing all her videos everywhere past review i see she's the i see if, Listen, she's fighting with, with a side chick of one of them there. That that is what happened to her. That's just what happened to Better Edu. They should just enter house. And there's one another part in Sir Elvis when you said um you, you would do everything possible, you know, if you had the opportunity to make Nigeria better. I, I think that was kind of like a metaphor in my own understanding. It's not like you're gonna you are a violent person or you want to do something violent, no matter what it takes. Listen, when a patriot is talking. So you that doesn't really get the, 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 the drift, you would think, what is this guy saying? Is he supporting violence? Is he supporting stealing? Is he supporting grab it, snatch it, and run away with it? No! Service not was not supporting that. Thank you. That's, God bless that's, you that's not what he's supporting. Because that's Thank the first thing. You know, people were just like, oh, what's this guy saying? I'm disappointed. No! No! If you're in a position of power, if you're in a position of constituted authority if if god gives you that opportunity if that opportunity opportunity has been bestowed upon you eh and if it means taking out some disgruntled enemy uh, elements so anything possible to make sure if it means to take out the disgruntled element the rotten eggs the rotten apple in the basket you will take out that rotten apple in the basket not to contaminate the other apples i think that is where he's coming from you do anything to protect your child. Most of you are parents here. Yeah. You will do anything for your child. Even if it means you will starve for one year, but your child will eat, you will starve for one year. That's what he's talking about. That's patriotism. That is love for country. That is sacrifice. Many of us don't have it. The so-called rulers we have today is, is the personal aggrandizement. They, they don't give a rat behind of you and me or the state of the nation, you know, economical, even the value of the Naira, they don't give it, they, they, in fact, it's dollars they use now, it's dollars. We are seeing what's going on, like Tunji Ojo and what's her name, Better Edu, they share dollars. It's not, it's not only them. It's not only them. Far, Madam Farouk share dollars, even the Buari, even the Remy Tinubu, it's not dollars. Shei Tinubu does not share dollars. They should enter us a bit, distracting us. And then, um, talking about dictatorship, who is a dictator? A dictator is somebody who takes power by force. It takes power by force. Now, I've said it before, Nigeria needs a benevolent dictator. Now, that term dictator is kind of puts people off because we have seen it happen. People who were supposedly um, right-sided right, right people or people that wanted you know, their countries to do better, they go against colonialism, they go against even people who uh, misappropriation of funds, you know, bad leadership and all that. When they get that power now, what happens? The human, the human context coming, greed. Those little, little uh, um, um, elements coming, greed, quest for, for power. They say power, uh, uh, cor uh, power corrupts absolute. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. If you are not a conscious person, if you're not a conscious person and you're going to leadership, that's why right, being a leader is, is not, it's not a day's job. It's not funny. There are physical and spiritual elements to being a great leader. And that's why you see someone like Nelson Mandela, he had the power to be a, a dictator in South Africa. But he understood the laws of, he understood certain laws of life. And that's why when it was time for him to leave the ovation while it was loudest, he left. But however, the breed of leaders we have today, let me tell you, the likes of Mandela has, has, has passed. What we have today, like for example, dictators in the past, which is making us think, using that word dictator, benevolent dictator, Nigeria needs that right now. Nigeria is rotten. People don't understand. Nigeria is, Nigeria don't kaput. And the only way to deal with them, we need a benevolent dictator. Not in the terms of taking power and not knowing yourself. Thank you very much. I have a lot to say, but I will stop here. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Madarita, for understanding where I'm coming from. You know, and another thing again is that the word dictator maybe is scaring people, but I don't know if there's another word for it. Maybe Augustine might take us through when I come to him. Me, I don't know another second word we can change. Exchange for the word dictator. Dictator is dictator. So if there's another word, please, I'm here to learn. Then we'll be using that word. Maybe that one might be less harsh. But the way it is, what you need when you get there, you, you have to, listen, you have to betray everybody that is expecting you to do the, to, 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 to favor them instead of favoring the, the people and do the right thing. That is how we can have a better Nigeria. If no, we are not going anywhere. Thank you very much. Let me call on Mr. Um, Ogar, um, Jonathan Kisley. Thank you very much, sir, for your patience with us. I would like you to talk to us after you, then I'll come to Ogassian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Good evening to you, sir. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good evening. Yeah. Thanks, to, thanks to everyone there. I believe uh, you can hear me clearly. Yes, very clear. OK, yeah. Uh, thanks to everyone there, to all the submission uh, made uh, so far. Let me just quickly, you know, say one just uh, with respect to your uh, the question you asked that an alternative to the word uh, dict dictator. I think what we need in Nigeria is just leader. We have been made to believe that we have leaders. We don't have leaders. What we have are just ruiners. So whether we like it or not, we don't have leaders in Nigeria as it stands today. We don't have leaders. So what we need is a leader, a true leader. That's what we need in Nigeria. See? So I will um, I will just start with this uh, with the, the interview, Rufai, with uh, Patitomi, Professor Patitomi. I give it to Rufai. Brilliant, you know, brilliant interview. He was bold, a bold journalist. He confronted Professor Patti Tomi head on that he is part of the system to a very large extent. Do you know what it means for a journalist to confront the likes of Patti Tomi and say, you are part of the rotting system? That's what Rufai did. Without fear, he confronted him head on. Of course, Professor Patti Tomi vehemently disclaim it. He, he said that's, that's not the case. However, you know, he's someone that I respect and he made a very profound statement. You know, when he said in that interview, he said it kind of in a subtle way. He said the U.S. Treasury Secretary, which is the equivalent of Nigeria finance, finance minister, he flies on economy class. What a contrast. What a contrast. Compare that to what we see in Nigeria. Nigeria ministers, presidential appointees, and all the rest of them, they don't fly on economy. They don't even fly business. They chatter. They chatter. Do you know what is the US sec Treasury Secretary is? The position of a US Secretary, uh, uh, I mean, Treasury Secretary. And it's true, most of these people fly economic class because every dollar, every cent is accounted for. And that brings me to this better Edu saga. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere soon. As I, I said that some few days ago. The real issue here in Nigeria is that there is no crime, financial crime, criminality that is committed against the Nigerian state that is done unilaterally or by one person, executed, planned, executed by one person. It is not possible. It is not. In this case, I like I, my, Madam, Madam Rita, at least you use the word audit, audit. I was looking for that word since, I, even from Sheung, 
That's where she missed it in that interview. So the man came there to run his mouth all he likes, to come and lie. You know, when you did something wrong and you still want to muzzle yourself through, you know you are wrong and you still want to muzzle yourself through. That's what Tuji Ojo, you know, came to channels to do. He knew, he was lying, broad day. But he wanted to muzzle him, 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 you know, himself through. But he was able to do that because she, being a Nigerian journalist, as most of them are, in many cases, they are, they are either on the side of the politicians or they are ill-informed or not properly educated on the subject that they are taking someone on. In this case, for Sheung, Sheung is ill-informed. Say it to him, he's ill-informed on this subject matter. And as a journalist, if you know that, then you get yourself prepared. Sheung was not prepared. He was not, again, he was not properly informed. When I say this now, I, I, he's not properly educated on this subject matter that he, he came in to interview someone like this person who is a, a minister in Nigeria. The man cannot come there and run his mouth and muzzle his way through. No, it's not possible. The issue is that in Nigeria, as it is in any, in any organization, even in a business, a small business, I run a business, I cannot take one, one dollar out to say I want to pay a family member. I will explain it to my auditor. I'm not going through. I'm talking of auditor that I pay, that I hired. I can't, I can't go through with it. I have to explain it. So before you do that, you must have prepared yourself before you take one dollar out. Talk less of a state. Talk less of Nigeria, a country. It is the duty of the auditor general. That's why I said they are all part of the deal. They are all part of this. They are all in need to get that. It is not possible. A, a simple, a, in fact, an accountant student, 101 audit <laughs> will tell you this. It's as simple as that. The auditor will have flagged it. It is not possible. You cannot do that. That's number one. Number two, before you, before you become minister, the ministry, what he's doing now is that either way, if they do their job, he himself will go in, or the wife, or the friend, or the family member, all of the, one, he, one of them, we, 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 go, we, go, we go in here. So he cannot eat his cake and have it, because normally the ministry, before they award that contract, that consultancy award, before they award it, normally there is a document that they will have stated. Do you have, this is the question, do you have or do you know or are you related to anyone who is in government? If yes, disclose it. That's simple. Like, that, that question have been must have been asked. I can say that one hundred and one percent. And normally they will lie. They will say no. So if that question as was asked, I'm not saying that maybe the ministry have it. They will have asked that question. But normally they lie. It's part of audits. You can't go to an auditor and say you pay this money to this account, this private account, and you, what you have to disclose it. Are you, do you know or are you related to anyone in the government or are you politically exposed? That's the question. When it comes to contract, when it comes to procurement for crying out loud, and I want to believe whoever that runs that company must have lied that I do not know anybody. So that person has lied. So that person goes in for it. It goes in. So there's no way Tuji Ojo can come in. And for Tuji Ojo, rather, for him also, before you became a minister, that's what we call the code of conduct. On that form too, there's a question that, do you, are you a shareholder of any company that you own 
more than 3%. Are you a shareholder or a director of any company, public or private, that you own more than 3%? So Sheung's question will have been, if he's properly informed, Mr. Minister, what is your percentage ownership on this company? Let him come out and say that, or oh, I own nothing. Then you cannot be a shareholder. Unless he comes and say, I have 1%. Unless he comes and say, I'm a shareholder of 2%. But once you are a shareholder of 3% or more, you are obligated to disclose it. That is where she should have gone after. That's where she should have gone after. Did you, declare, did you disclose this information before you appointed the federal minister? And if not, you are also in for it. So when they do their shenanigans and they do their investigation, which I know they, do, they, they are not doing anything, there's nothing like investigation, because if they are doing this investigation, the auditor general, the accountant general, should be in by now. There is no way they can talk themselves out of this. That is how they loot Nigeria. And I checked, just, for, for, just to, to put this out, and I checked all the companies, about 11 of them that were awarded, this three billion naira. Only three of them are with the Corporate Affairs Commission, registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission. Please go there now. It's all, it's all on, on, uh, on Arise News. You will see all the companies, 11 of them. Okay. Only three of them were actually I, I, registered. It's not the ring there for the past two years old. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me let me leave it. Let me leave it at that, uh, Mr. Elvis. And then if I have time, <laughs> I will go on with my disclosure. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the Thank opportunity. Thank you, Thanks. Mr. Jonathan. If you give Mr. Jonathan 30 minutes, it's not enough for because in an analysis, analyst, I mean, so you know, say when they do the analyze or they see and uh, or gas see or almost the same. You know, but uh, nevertheless, I see the way somebody right for comment session just now say, you know, we should be allowing some people to talk longer. But my person with type that I, I be like, okay, Sebastian, not be my fault too, uh, if I try and now they'll, they'll come in this, I don't debate bias. So if you know, let me try. If not, I for the two. But I have to just, I know some of them are happy just now say we stop Madarita because you still wanted to hear from her. But unfortunately, Eight minutes is eight minutes, so yeah. But meanwhile, let me move on. Guys, press on the like button, help us to share. Let's call on Augustine. Augustine, thank you very much, sir, for joining us today. Good evening to you, sir. Please, you have eight minutes. You need to unmute yourself. Oh. Unmute yourself. You, you are still muted. It's unmuted now. Okay, you are good now. Go ahead. Thank okay, you, yeah. So, so I, like I said, good evening, everybody. Please, all protocols observed. Actually, I know I joined halfway, but I had you. I think I, there's one interview by uh, Rufai Oseni on uh, APC, Felix Moka, regarding all this uh, saga about the uh, better do and the, the money they embezzled or they allegedly stolen. You see, one thing I want to mention is this. I always want people to read between the lines, the way they stand there and be careful. There was a question Rufai asked. What the guy was explaining, you know, this Felix Morka, it's a shame really with APC. There's no way you can defend the APC without looking stupid and daft. Rufai was saying, couldn't the Internal Affairs Minister, uh, Minister of Interior, the, what is the name I've forgotten? Couldn't that guy put whatever company he's having, put your share, put it in trust? You wind it up, put it in, that's what they, that's what they do. It's not an offense. In fact, you are expected to have established yourself maybe in the private sector. If you've been in the public sector, maybe you've been a lecturer in the university and you appointed a minister. It's like sabbatical. They know you've got a profession and your salary will be going. Everything about you is known. But if you are in the private sector, you have shares or this, doing your business, that's okay. Innocent is manufacturing car. If tomorrow you make him a minister, he will, whatever share he has in his business, wind it or put it in trust. In trust means that you left it in the cooler. When you finish, 
whatever you are doing, you can return to it. Ask, because when you, that is the law. That is what Peter will be. When they say Peter will be had an account in Panama, all this, and Peter will be explained it to them. He said, yes, I used to have. When I know I want to be an Ambra governor, I winded everything up. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter whether you put it in your name of your daughter or what. As long as he's there, they looked at it. That is the law. Because there must be a way, Niger Watch, you are the owner of Niger Watch now. Tomorrow they can say, Niger Watch, come and be this somewhere. You have to leave. Your interest here is still protected. As long as your share, you now said, this 10% or 20% or 90% that is my own is now under trust. So they know that whatever happens, your share is, is, is secured. You are no longer operating it. In fact, nothing. So far, it is there because you can't come back to it. If there are gains being made by the company and the according, you won't get anything because you are no longer there. But the day you resume again, you start. So why he was asking him, why didn't you do it? And the guy was, I mean, the Felix Morka was busy beating above the bush. He said, people are trained criminals. By the way, why should we be expecting something from Tinubu? In fact, do you know that I have a moral question, morally. How will Tinubu even be talking about fraud? How? How will Tinubu even be talking about? That is just to say you still, but today who is operating Alpha Beta? Lagos state government since time, since 2007, who is operating it? You see, I believe, I agree with those that said that Nigeria, Nigeria is finished, according to Madam Rita, kaput. But what do we do? That is the thing, because that's what people are listening. What do we do? A dictator? No, he can't solve it. A dictator can't solve the problem, can't solve Nigeria's problem. I say this because Nigeria is like France, Germany, UK, Belgium, Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, Austria, Luxembourg, maybe Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and maybe extend to Russia. You want to bring a dictator from Portugal that Italians and Spanish will agree with. You want to bring a dictator from Denmark that Russia and UK will clap hand for. It can work. Given our political history, what any serious person could do is because we are different people, they must devolve power. I so much believe in one thing. If my state of Anambra is embezzling money, it does not mean that the Quara state will be also be embezzling their own. I doubted it. After all, P2B was governor of Anambra State. Go and check the people that were in government with him. Some embezzled. Why didn't he embezzle? So it's not one, it's not one cap fit all. It's not. P2B said he met Anambra on 25th, 25th, number 25, on the white league table, or your state 26th. His aim was to push it at least first term. Some of those people he met around that 21, 22 are still there. Why did he, why did Anambra move to number one for three years and then number two with Edo State number three and the Abia number one? Why? So it does not. That's why I said because we are different people, we should develop at our own pace. That is what we solve Nigeria problem. I do not I do not think that bringing a dictator that even the dictator will be biased. Maybe his area we've been having them. You think that they are dictator, all they are doing is just to favor one thing. That is, that is just, just, okay, for instance, let's look at what is happening at the plateau. Are you telling me that if plateau state has their own plateau state police, it will be this worse? It won't. It will never. Because they will be the indigenous of plateau and then probably from the area, local government, where they come from. That is the best way to do it. Because by nature, God has already, if I was to use the word God, we have evolved at different people. Let us you exploit that advantage. There's a reason. There's a reason. Even in Europe went to do Central Europe. There's a way they still have their own um, sovereignty by country. There are certain things they do. They know how they relate. The level of development in Portugal is not dissenting with Sweden. Sweden is far ahead of Portugal. But they are EU. Dissenting with Italy compared to Germany. Germany is the richest. 
but they are EU. So that is how it should be. The only way Nigerians can save themselves from themselves is this. When you devolve it, you see competition. That's why it should be, particularly in terms of security. This idea, you can recruit, yes, I agree. But let it be, let, let if at local government, you don't tell me that if you go to a local government, you want to recruit police for them, it should be indigenous of that local government, people living there. You can't bring somebody from some because that way it will work. So if you bring us together, that's why people are stealing money. Let me say this. The internal security, the internal affairs minister, if he state, if we devolve power the way it should be, there are certain things he could do at federal, he can't do it in his state. It's not possible. I tell you, it's not possible. His people will deal with him. He knows. If you say the better do is not the um, what is it called? It's not the um, uh, the weeping baby. The the weeping all this. If you send him to cross river, send her to cross river. Say cross river, you devote power, and they give her one thing to do. She won't be. She won't be all this. Miss, she he can't. Because he's that deli- even me in Anambra will be saying, eh, that one across if I'm at an appoint them. She will be only answerable to them, not to federal. She will not be answerable to than to his to her people. So they will know how to handle her. In fact, she dare not try it. But because we are doing this federal, everybody just uh, they do, um, everybody just uh, maybe talking about uh, Let's be this and this. that's why people are taking advantage. When you say you say hey, after all this person still, after all this person still. Okay, I had argument that hey, is the only thing. But like you said, Niger, what you are in a what other platform? That's okay. Look at the nonsense we are talking. It is that is the only thing that can save Nigeria because we must take advantage of our differences in value system in everything, education wise. If Bayelsa is developing massively, a bony state is lagging behind. It's up to them. Who cares? If you don't want to copy what others are doing, it's left for you. So that is the way it should be. Nigeria bringing us together and then all this uh, idea of uh, if you want to do something, say, let us do that. Let everybody develop at your own. I don't care. But that will be competition because you can't win. If you had been doing it that, if you are going to play against Brazil, FIFA will say, ah, because you are Brazil, any country you are going to play, it will be, you will be 5-0 down. So if uh, what is it called Ivory Coast is to play, uh, thank you. If Ivory Coast is to play Brazil, there's Ivory Coast five, Brazil one. Then the Brazil is zero. They start. You don't do that way. You allow them to compete. One day they will develop. Thank you. Thank you, Agassi, and God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, we have two more to go. Uh, Black Panther, sir, please talk to us. Good evening to you. You have eight minutes. Okay, Black Panther, you're not there. And um, uh, Marshall, please talk to us. No, I'm here. I'm here. Is this, is this <laughs> I'm, I'm somewhere. So I'm also like, don't hold your break. Somewhere where? <laughs> I'm also like, hold your break. <laughs> I did I outside. So I I just, four I minutes just, for your time. Oh. Four minutes. Yeah, I know. Say now you go talk. Hey, hey, I greet everybody. Oh. Wako, your. Well, I don't mind my. This other talk, but he said. In Bini, before like, we start to uh, speak, like, say, you want to talk to Mr. Oduwa now. <laughs> before we start to speak anything for Bini, we we'll first of all, you know, honor our king. That is why a lot of people are so jealous because we love him so much, it's our father. And that is why all of us, we tag all of us as kings and warriors. We are warriors and we stand for the truth. I would like to greet everybody here. Greet everybody in the comment section. I love you all. Greet all, Madam Rita. I love you, everyone. Mr. CM, my dean of faculty. Yeah. I greet you. Everybody, I greet you all. May God bless all of you and, you know, cap everyone with the abundance of wisdom that no man can even think about because when wisdom speak, when wisdom reacts, the people of the world will see us as what is wrong with these ones. Which is they talk now by talk, talk, talk. They go to say they go take out. Uh huh. Yesterday, I listened to all of you. I was so glad the mess is coming in in a different level. Like I said before, 
I said, we are going to go into a realm whereby the evil we multiply in hundred folds. Then as it's multiplying, many will come and join us and come to the realization that if a child is born and the parent did not do the foundation well, that child become, he grows up, he goes to the institution and he graduated because of the upbringing of that child the foundation that child will still find himself in a dirty mode and the elders our elders will now start to trace what happened this child went to good school but what happened they will not go back to the foundation they will not see that the foundation was wrong was wrongly placed how do we do this how do we make him now? We have to bring him back and treat him like a baby. Start to train him up to become what? To become an adult and realize himself that he cannot swim in dirty mud because his foundation is now well laid. The reason why I'm bringing this, when I came into Niger Wash, I understood the old thing and i said one thing i said that the system and the foundation i knew the reason why i'm saying it because everything but i didn't want to push too much but i push but i knew that at the long run we will begin to reason from that perspective and bring a little bit from me and try to bring it out you see, this whole shenanigans, but I, but I, I want to speak on better. The young lady who said, I went to church and make um, a mockery of his own God, not my God that I start, not to Saloboa, his own God. You see, that lady, Beta she was she was planted there for this purpose, that is, for this that has happened. She was planted there. It's not by mistake. They put better idea there. Let me tell you, I told you people I participated in politics for some time because they were telling us we in the in the human rights sector in school, they say we should go in and experience it and see we can make a change. I went there. You see what is there? Politicians will not change. But I look, anybody, all of us here, if they put you in them, any ministry, you 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 for you read you you study the ministry and want to go accordingly. You will just go there and start taking money, and do, you don't have the power to say you want to carry one billion, not to talk about of, of, of three point something billion within eight months. Look in politics, people they they serve you. You must serve before you become better. I did better. What did they call? I don't want that better. I'll call her better. She has not even done anything. Don't you recollect? You people should recollect that there's something, there's a red flag on this lady. Many saw it, but they couldn't really know what is. There was a red flag on her. But Heidi was prepared to do this so that Agbado can come out and say, Oh, yes, yes, yes. Is no no sacred, no sacred cow will be left untouched. That is what they want to paint nothing is going to happen to her she will go there all the people that they arrested that they put in one gallery if you see all the, no nothing will happen to them can you imagine somebody got a military fund for to secure jet and other things for the military the person went on and distributed the funds he took the money to his private account and distribute the fund round because that was the plan. But they took him in, but that was the plan. But after every disgrace, after every shenanigan they did, they now brought him out and say it's released. That is Nigeria for you. That is Nigerian politicians. They will only bring somebody as a sacred cow and make a caricature. But at the end of it, they will settle him and take him out of the whole thing. You people could not, can't you understand that even FFK cannot even, it's not talking. His time has not yet come 
to bring him in. Everybody has time. You see what I'm trying to paint to you, everyone here, every Nigerians out there. The Nigerian is rotting, and there's nothing you can do about it. Mr. Nigerians, welcome to our position where our our ass as a bunny. Our ass were bunny. We were shouting, welcome. Because this is what I've been seeing, and I was I was almost forced to say it. You need a military man that have a mindset of revolutionizing the whole thing, that have a mindset of giving us a new constitution. Nothing more, because none of the civilian you have there can do it. None of them. Everything is polarized. Corruption is established. It's a way of life. And everything is done. Mr. Najawash, thank you. Anybody that doesn't like your language, forget it is that way. Nigeria need a good dictator that will come in to give us a new constitution where we will not talk on how we are going. If not, Fulani will continue with their mesmerizing. I just will stop from here. Thank you. I have a lot to say, but I want to stop from here. Thank you, Mr. Najawash. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Uh... God, Black Panther, you stop in the right I, time. We have time, John. They reach eight minutes. I think his time remain one. <laughs> no, his time don't finish. Although, why? Yes, I want. What I wanted to say is that regarding this uh, bit, something quickly came to my mind. You see, the thing about Nigeria is that we we make a law, but we won't obey it. They said Rufai read out something that it is fraud for a private public money to get into private account. He read it is a policy of the federal federal government. You know, asking the uh, the, the man he was like, he said, why did why did this happen? Of course, that is the end of the whole show. The account is private. The money is public. So why should public go into private? If that is case, it's fraud. So what are they proving? With this law, Rufai didn't make it up. Just like INEX said, any document you give to us, if it's forged, we disqualify you. Tinubu submitted forged certificate. What are we doing today? So that, let me stop it there. We know we make the law. It's not the law is not the problem. We have the law, but we don't uh, apply it or enforce it. Thank you. Thank you, Ogasi. Thank you very much. Okay, let me move on to Amashola. Okay, Amashola, it's good to have you on the panel today. Good evening to you, sir. Talk to us. You have eight minutes. Yeah, even, uh, even to Niger and uh, Engineer Francis, I know both of you are on the backstage. I'll come back to you guys when um, it's your turn. Quiet, sir. Yeah, Nigeria, 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 Nigeria. Hey, the drama has just started. The main truth is um, the trap which this government kept in government to take money out has been exposed. And that's bitter what they do. And the assistant director of the looting is the man interior, uh, Mr. Tunji Ojo. The painful part is they put us, the youth, into a trap because you are saying, obedient, obedient, obedient. You want to rule, you want to rule. We have put somebody there. They have, this is the bait. The painful part is that the uh, Edu is herself is a greedy person. Even though they have put you to steal, you didn't use your common sense to steal. Now they have caught you. They didn't catch you. The God that Nigerians are serving, our Lord Almighty, caught up with you people. Because this was supposed to be the vessel for the looting. The vessel for the looting has been busted. The painful part for me as a Nigerian is if we don't see you in jail, Mr. Tunji Ojo, if they put a light, a light detector in your eyes, you are just lying. You are a thief. You are supposed to be the shining star of, of a Tunubu fake government. Everybody's imprisoning you. Some have imprisoned you behind the behind the cameras. We don't even know you're the one that have been praising me. Why? You goofed. You are talking on national TV. You can't answer straight questions. Beating around the boots left and right. Your eyes were showing it. On ordinary police, they detect a psychologist, a criminologist who know you are lying. So there's nothing you want to say. 
only you have how many companies taking contracts? And then you say a director, yeah, a shareholder. Shareholder, as a shareholder of a company, doesn't mean you collect money again. You are trying to say as if you are not aware. Any shareholder, so you if you create a company as a shareholder and you have resigned, you want to be a shareholder, you want to stay backstage. There is no way your eyes won't be in that company till you die. So you cannot tell us you are not aware. The painful part is that you people are young in their stealing. Because these guys in government, I call them uh, bandits of financial recklessness of Nigerians' uh, property. They are bandits in government. They are not taking, they are not already carrying a key. They don't they know they carry a uh, uh, weapon. But now pencil and viral, now they finish Nigeria. Did they finish Nigeria or was they look them? We sit down for us. Tunubu's pipeline of, of looting Nigeria, one is busted. There's one somewhere hiding. There's one somewhere hiding, and nobody has said this since. Where is Festo Kiyamu? That ministry, somebody took money, bought us fake play. It disappeared. It don't die. Nigerians, the earlier, the better. We don't have money. We don't have money. They are borrowing money to spend, and they are still looting it. The painful part is when the right person comes for Nigeria, I hope he will still have money to spend to fix the country. Concerning APC being stinking, APC has been stinking before now. They have, we have just been using nose marks to manage our life. Rufai is no more using nose marks. That's why he said it. APC is stinking. For Daddy Freeze, I can't blame you. You are talking. You are chopping life. Good. You are saying the youth. These bandits have been raising up another set of bandits to take over. This is one aspect of them. These two guys, they are young youths. Do we know any, an average Nigeria does not know all these people before now. But they are not in government. How did they get there? We don't know. Somebody that resigns from his private business. If he's not a thief, why will you leave your private business and want to go to politics? If you're not a thief, because there's quick money there. You want to get more money. To me, I'll still say Nigerians, shine your eye. You are still looking. We are sitting down in their house. They are looking us blind. As I said, those guys don't have conscience again. Bita Edu. Oh, Edu, it's just a picture that you are just, they are gimmick. Guinea, Guinea, Guinea fowl, they want to use in doing all this. Sorry, they say you are beautiful. Sorry, remove your pancake, you are ugly in the eye. A beautiful person has a good heart. It's not your physical, you are a wicked person. Don't you cook me? You have been jumping ever since I know you've been jumping left and right. One will see you, will think I am somebody, you are a human being, you are an animal to me. You are jumping left and right. You have destroyed the Labour Party. You stole money, you had issues with money, financial issues in the Labour Party during the campaign. We don't know whether you have even resolved it. You are moving from that party now. You say you don't have the ideology, is not your own. Do you have an ideology? You are not going to APC because that's where they are sharing money. You want to go and join the party. Nigerians, look at the kind of thieves we have. It's going there now. In a few months, uh, 2027 20, now, you will bust out from nowhere and join another party. That's where they, they move. I don't want to say that word here. They are those kind of people that jump from one one place to the other, looking for their daily daily living. I just watch for you. Eh, when you said that thing, eh, I, I did not believe that you were talking. But you just made me happy today. Nigeria needs a crazy man in government that will pursue all these people. If the right man is in government, I bet you those stealing money will leave the country for us. They will run. All those private jets are seen. You won't see them again because they are all thieves. They will leave. Nigeria is the way it is because those people benefiting are enjoying it and they will not let us free until we decide ourselves to free ourselves from the bandits in government. Thank you, Nigeria Watch. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mashallah. God bless you, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, everybody on the panel has spoken. So I would like to uh, put somebody on the backstage so that somebody else can okay. come in, you know? Okay. Somebody just left right now. That's fine. So let me, Tunaja was here first. Let me bring Tunaja in. Uh, Tunaja, thank you very much for joining us today. Good evening to you, sir. Please, you have eight minutes. Talk to us. Uh, Angela Francis, I'll come to you after Tunaja. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, greetings, sir. Ninja Watch. Thank you for having me. And um, greetings to everyone on the panel and the chat and uh, to the viewers. Um, I guess this um, uh, corruption uh, stuff is still going on. And um, I think they, they said Tinubu summoned uh, the this in an EFCC. She's talking to everybody. Um, see, this is the problem. And uh, they will talk to people, even if they fire her, it still makes no difference. Um, I don't think that will prevent any other people, any other person from stealing especially if they can get away with it. This one, they were able to catch her on time. Um, if they can get away with it, that is a problem. Because I've heard of the other lady that's two billions upon billions and she's still at large. So she can do whatever she likes with the money. And this is why you keep seeing people doing the same thing. And, and also there is this culture that we have that needs to be challenged. Whenever our people get into office, we start putting pressure on them to steal money, to start giving the family money, to start providing for the family. That literally, that's how we think. I remember when I went to Nigeria and they were like, oh, this person, they are doing so well because the, the, the sister is now part of the government. The sister was, and the, the, this one accepted his, set his brother up. Set, this is what they do. The moment they get into office, everybody is to just, the focus is to just bleed the state dry and give it to their family members or their friends or whoever they like. And the, and the rest, the people suffer from it. And I think that kind of culture has to go. And to really stop it, based on law, I've said it yesterday, if anybody, if you truly hate corruption, you want to start tying it now to the lives that it costs. So corruption is deadly. It's killing people. Let's, no, let's make no mistake about it. If they ask you to fix a road, and you didn't fix that road, an accident happened on that road, you part, you're partly responsible for the death of those people. It's, it's obvious. And hence... Why I'm proposing that we should start, we should start thinking about doing evaluations in various ministries, what their role is supposed to be. And if ones are stolen by politicians and all these people, and the evaluation is done based on the damage they've done, and if it costs life, they too should face the death penalty, period. And if it should be almost automatic when you steal from the national um, this in the national coffers, it should be life imprisonment. There's no real reason why you should be stealing from the state if you are not corrupt. You are not trying to damage the state. What what is that kind of behavior? I'm surprised we've not, we've not gotten here since we've been doing this for a very long time. We've not gotten to a point whereby we say, you know what? If you start dipping into public pause, you should pay for it. Seriously pay for it. Not slap you on your wrist and you disappear to uh, oblivion. They should search for you the way they search for terrorists. If you even if you run overseas, they should be looking for you. There was a time Nigeria used to try something like that, where they would try to catch uh, Omar Odiko and all the rest. You can't just steal public money and think it's okay. The little that we have, and you take it away. There are, there are consequences to these things. There are women that are trying to have uh, give birth in, at hospital because of lack of medication. They pass on. I think I heard of the case of uh, Adiola recently that almost died in America. If that was in Nigeria, you would be dead. Because people, the, the investment that was supposed to go into the healthcare system is not there because some people are just stealing the entire thing. We can't, we, if something is this serious, it's leading to loss of life. Why should you treat it as anything else? It's murder. And we should be able to carry out the evaluation based on the ministry you are working at. And if you steal money, and the good thing about it, about root way of dealing with things is that it's going to deal with it based on the gravity of the damage you are doing then most of the mass of the people are not going to face this type of situation because they are not, their own action is not that deadly. Because if you take five naira from a police officer on the street, it's even from somebody that takes five billion. Very different. It's not the same thing. And I, that's why I think we have to start doing that kind of evaluation. And I hope that the government is listening. If they truly want to curb corruption, this is the kind of approach you have to take. So anybody that is doing it, they know they are taking their lives into their own hand. If you want to steal billions upon billions because you think it's your it's your father's property, then you know your head is at stake. And if you run, the NIA, DSS, all of them will be haunting you wherever you run to. 
if we cannot set an example, how why is he not going to carry on? I remember we went um some people uh, that were responsible for, like the Nazis, that were responsible for killing a lot of Jews. The Israelis were hunting them down wherever they are. They sent out a message that if you kill us, you are going to pay for it. And I think if you steal Nigeria's uh, money, you should be able to. They should be able to hunt you down. They should. It should have an automatic um, uh, gear that kicks in with the secret services to hunt you down. You can't keep. We can't keep bleeding like this. And this is why I keep saying that there are ways we can deal with problems without just shouting at people. You have to think about solution closely. Because if you can you imagine if you push for something like that and it goes through, anybody that wants to steal now will know they are taking their life into their own hands. The state will be hunting them. They have to hunt them. They have no choice. If they catch you stealing oil that belongs to the people, they have to hunt you down and kill you. And if if, if they don't want to stop that, they go old school. You know, like the in North Koreans, eh, they those ones they don't take prisoners. If you steal and you, or you do something to the state that is so bad, they will punish you, not just you, they will punish your family and punish generation after you. That's how bad it is. That if you feel like you are gonna keep breaking the law and acting this delinquently, then when they punish you, then they punish your family and they punish the generation after. They, some of them they punish the grandparents. Because you can't just the, the decay that they've seen, and there's a reason why that, those, those people have gone, they've gone that crazy. Because they know if they didn't do that, the state will probably collapse. And that's what's happening in Nigeria, and we are still very lenient to thieves. Thieves steal and they get away with it. Oh, the rest, maybe they go for a year in prison, two or twice. And when they go to prison and they live like that, they, they are the ones funding the prison. They literally they might even help uh, pay the salary of uh, the prison guards. And they're basically living large in prison. What kind of attitude is that? If you don't take criminal behavior that is actually decaying the state into as a very, very serious thing, you are not going to be able to deal with the problem. And because I really hate the way these people are damaging the state, you have to take it more seriously, at least to the point whereby you reduce the problem so much that you can now water the law down to become more like Western listening law. But this is an emergency. The Nigerian pulse is under attack constantly. Every day, the people want to steal from the Nigerian coffers. You have to start putting serious safeguards to ensure that all these people that do these things have to pay daily for it. And the family members that keep encouraging them to steal, if they know that their own head is at risk, they will not do it too. This type of behavior has to stop somewhere. If you want to stop corruption, there are laws out there that you can pass to deter that nonsense. Next, <laughs> next time, even when the, the, their son wants to carry out uh, or, or daughter wants to go and steal, the family members will be like, don't dare it all, because if you try it, the, we know we are all going to go down for it. Watch how the state, the state will change immediately. That is on one side. The police, uh, the soldier that um, went and uh, uh, this thing insulted uh, the Lagos uh, governor yesterday. I was saying that that guy, what he did, he fell out he, he fell out of line. He shouldn't have done that because when you're in the military, they say the reason why they don't speak openly. If Western military just got coming out talking to civilians like that, yeah, the military is a sacred institution. They have to remain disciplined because they, they, they are supposed to protect the, the state. They protect lives day in, day out. That's what they do. Your job is to stay there and remain disciplined and because if, if you break rank any other person breaks rank the state could fall apart the military is the backbone of the state they can't you can't have people just coming out insulting people and talking like see i was surprised that guy just came out openly to be talking the way he, he spoke really and uh, it's a good thing that he's arrested and uh, disciplined so that you can't step up on like that this, he made a mistake with what he did mean that uh, three wrongs cannot make a right. The, the, the one driving opposite, the social driving opposite this in the direction of traffic is wrong. The, the governor is wrong. And the, the, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry thank about you that. Too, thank you. Um, let me move on. Um, thank you very much, everybody. The last person on the panel is Angina Francis. Angina Francis, please talk to us. Good evening to you. You have eight minutes. Good evening. Thank you. I know that eight minutes will not be enough, but let me start. First of all, if if the law will be to grab those uh, uh, offenders and finish them, especially if whatever it is that you did results in the loss of a life in Nigeria. That would be great. 
Then uh, to the last uh, speaker, let me refer you to Tinubu and Mahmoud Yakubu. Remember the time Yakubu announced Tinubu? Remember there was a kid in Plateau State that committed suicide. That is loss of life as a result of the wuru they did. So start with them. You don't jump the stream and go and start in the start with them. Go go to River State. And if that youth copper that was spied from all those uh, things uh, Wike did to manipulate the results, that's a loss of life. Start with that one too. You don't just jump in. Better Edu is not doing anything on her own. She is an SPV. That entire ministry is SPV. They use it to move money to the parties. So don't jump into the uh, uh, this case in the middle. Now, on the issue of the military, I am still waiting for the Nigerian military to react. I don't know how in the world they got out of sync. The military, part of your charter, that oath you swear, is to defend the constitution of the country. The military, you guys are there and watching, the constitution is being molested and you guys are sitting. Now, uh, as a military father, let me give you an example of what makes up the military guys. They are supposed to be a family and they live like a family. Uh, somebody mentioned yesterday about uh, some even Nigerians that were saying that if they were to attack Nigeria, that they will also attack Nigeria. And he's like, oh, how can you do that to your motherland or to your father's land? Well, remember that during the Nigerian Biafran War, it was Nigerians killing Nigerians, of course. Yeah, they now named them Biafrans, so they will kill them. The point is that in the military, once you are defending the constitution, it doesn't matter which country is being attacked. There was a time, uh, one of my, my second son, who he's now deployed, there was a time he came to visit me. And then, uh, I always try to push him into uh, marrying a Nigerian girl too. So there's this one of my friends that his daughter just graduated. So I asked my son, let's go and uh, pay them a visit. We went, but there was something interesting that I noticed. My son was driving and he was speeding. I didn't say anything. The next thing, we saw blue lights behind us. That was the police. And he stopped. And the officer asked, asked him, do you know why I stopped you? He said, uh, I believe so, sir. I'm uh, speeding a little. <laughs> the officer said, no, this is a white police officer now. He said, no, you were speeding a lot. You were doing 75 in a 55 zone. So he asked the uh, he asked him for his driver's license and uh, registration. So my son got his wallet, and as he was pulling, uh, opening it to get his driver's license, this uh, police officer cited his badge, and then he. He uh, looked at him again and said, are you a SEAL? He said, sir, yes, sir. The police officer stepped back one step and saluted him. And then this is what the officer said. He said, thank you for your service to the country. He is now deployed. He's in, in the Navy, actually. He's now deployed in the Middle East. But the point is, Thank you. This is a white officer saying to a black boy, 
thank you for your service to the country. He doesn't even know if he has been deployed before or not. But once he saw that his Navy SEAL badge, he knew immediately that, yes, these are the people going there to fight that war, to defend us so that the war doesn't come to our shores here. Now, San Wolu, he chewed, especially for a, somebody that went to, uh, is it Bornu or Sambisa? to fight Boko Haram there so that they don't end up coming down to Lagos. And in that uh, venture, this guy has a bullet that resulted, either the bullet is still lodged in his arm or it resulted in them replacing the bone there with some uh, steel. San Wolu should be saluting that kid and thanking him for his this to the country and not especially when Sam will look uh, his anger from that video is when the guy even said that he's a military uh, guy and someone is like yeah that's the more the reason i should uh, lock you up who is he without that guy and those ones that went to fight those people from Bruno, boko haram will, will be in lagos as we speak by now are you insinuating so, that in america the military don't obey the law they obey that the they law. They are allowed to break they the law. They obey the law, but we appreciate them too. They obey the law, and we appreciate them. And in that case, where he was riding an Okada in the wrong direction, remember, the officer that spoke said that he was on, on errand. So, which means maybe a senior officer sent him on something that he had to take some short court. However, what the details are when they come out, the point is that it, an officer is always disciplined. The point is that San Wolu and those his filthy thugs don't have any business laying their hands or even holding somebody that went to Boronu to fight and even sacrifice if needed. He did because he had the bullet wound there to show. Is that how you appreciate him? Because he went there to make sure Boko Haram doesn't spread all the way to Lagos, where San Wolu would have been a victim of them. So when you talk, please know what you're talking about. My son it, is there. It, now. What if the soldier goes and dies in driving opposite the traffic after serving in Boko? What than, good is that? Less than, less you can't than, encourage law want... breaking. Please. When you say you want the uh, rule of law. Uh, uh, Niger, watch, please mind the time he's taking from me and give it back to me. The point I'm trying to make, sir, is this. Being an officer is one thing, but being ready and able to sacrifice for your nation is another thing. Let me give you a good idea. My conversation with my son uh, recently, I've been trying to push him to get married. And finally, what he told me. You have taken more than eight minutes. And wait, you wait, stories. please, uh, please. What he told me. Uh, Niger, to Niger, I beg, just hold your breath, let him finish. What he told me is, he said that I want to get married, but it will be after my combat years. That is after this period when he is still able to go to the combat i mean to uh, war and i asked him why he said because he doesn't want to have a child that will not have his father or a woman that will be a widow In, to everybody right. it sounds okay but to me thank it's you it's like my son is telling me that he's ready to die for the country even before he starts his own family thank you sir. a soldier goes out there and makes this kind of sacrifice and you i'm quite sure you don't even know anywhere anywhere right. around Francis, military thank to anyway thank I'll, you Angela i'll Francis. continue thank you. this 10 later. minutes is enough thank you thank you you have a final submission later on that you continue from there thank you very much everybody on the planet
Can I, can I, can I say something? Did he just argue for law breaking? Hold on. Hold on. Please, everybody, hold on now. Uh -uh. We are not in the market here. Go ahead, Augustine. To be brief, just a, a quick take. Quickly, what please. I want to say, what I want to say is that it is not for nothing that a civilian is a commander in chief. So every military is under a civilian uh, control. What in, in, in uh, Fashola's case, I mean, some Wolu's case, I expect him to do is not the way he handled it. I can't encourage encourage a military man to break the law, but you direct him to the, you shouldn't just speak to him like that openly. Chastising is not good. Okay. What you should do is that you should call just that the way they said uh, Fashola did. You call him, report him okay. to his commandant. It's as simple as that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Black Panther, you wanted to say something quickly. 30 yes. seconds. You see, there is difference between when somebody I, I wanted to explain this way, but you see, somebody is trying to interject. You you don't make somebody a, a military man and make a mockery of him in a civil offense. You take him through the protocol, give him that respect, because it's not all of us that will sign that bill that I'm ready to die for a nation. You are just making money, hey, break the law, break the law. Is that what is that how to address somebody that breaks the law? Who has who is serving and are collected bullets even under treatment? Is that how to all do right. it? Can I, can I have 30 seconds too? Since okay, everybody's having ahead, this, <laughs> thank you. So, yeah, 30 seconds. Um, so the, I think the where the issue is is that Sean Wally didn't handle it well, but you can see why they did it because they felt like military people and security officials they use, use their cloud to break the law. But there is also the other aspect, he could have admonished him in a smart way and say, After risking your life to uh, protect the country, you want to go and die in the uh, traveling opposite you should be setting a good example for others you see what i mean so but okay. i will leave it at that thank you thank you everybody i appreciate every one of you right there um let's see how the army themselves responded to this particular issue that we are still deliberately deliberating in today let's quickly listen to this i want to say that uh the soldier that was apprehended by the governor of lagos State why applying on a one way does not represent the Nigerian army because uh but in every respect it contravenes what we stand for which is discipline as an army and it contravenes the constitution and the laws of lagos and so we frown at that as the army but for what you are like that soldiers have gone to the social media casting aspersion on the person and the office of uh, the governor of Lagos State. I would say it's only one soldier that has done that. The army has investigated. That soldier has been apprehended. And we are investigating for every other comic card that you have seen on social media. They are not personnel of the Nigerian army. We have investigated that. From the mode of the dressing of some of them, you will know that they are not personnel of the Nigerian army. One of them was wearing the car badge upside down. And you will know that that is not a personnel of the Nigerian army. An officer can never do that. So we have investigated some of them. And uh, from the utterances that uh, these people made, you will know the angle from which they are talking from. They are talking politics, not army. So we we'll leave it at that. For the ones that pertain to the army we are investigating, it will be treated accordingly. Even this morning, as I arrived in Nugu, the chief of administration army sent me a draft directive that was sending down to all formations and units of the Nigerian army to further sensitize our troops on the need to be disciplined and abide with the laws of every community where they are deployed. So we are serious about upholding laws, upholding rules and remaining disciplined and we will enforce that on our personnel. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. People, I guess say the matter now would it it go rest now, right? Okay, let's have our final solution. Not, re not really. When, uh, okay, that's not fine. Really. Uh, when it gets to, to your time, when it gets to your time, when it gets to your time, sir, please let's respect the rules. Okay. When it gets to your okay. time, use your time to talk about it. Uh give us a mandate, please give us your final submission. Five minutes. 
Okay, you are not there right now. Go to Lumide. Thank you very much uh, for the time. Okay, you are there. Thank you. Please um, go ahead. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, well, all wonderful contributions today. Um, everyone, thank you for making your voice heard. Well, what's more can be said other than um, the, the country is in a state of quagmire, like I keep mentioning. If you think that these guys are doing anything that is surprising, nothing is surprising. There's nothing surprising. All they are doing is just hide and seek. Or oh, better I do this, that, this. Um, hey, all of these things are planned, planned work. The only thing is, will the country get better? In the, it's in the hands of Nigerians. Not even in the hand of God now, because God has done his own part. And he has left it for the Nigerian people to take it to take their destiny into their hands, into their own hands. So um if the country will get better, it's in the hands of Nigeria. If there'll be a revolution, it's in the hands of Nigeria. If there's gonna be um leadership or anything, is in everything is in the hands of Nigerians, and Nigerians will decide how they want to pursue their destinies, and then um set things right for their country as it stands right now these guys they live by propaganda they live by deceit they live by lies nothing good can ever nothing good can ever nothing good can ever come out of a criminal drug baron dual citizenship Identity theft, uh, for fifty four and sixty thousand US dollars, narcotic money. Uh, Lee Andrew uh, died um, when this guy was a was in Chicago during the uh, criminal drug baron uh, stuff. Nothing good ain't gonna come out from these people. Nigerians, you need to arise and take your country back. The military, everything have been compromised. Everything compromised. Mr. Francis, you live in the US, I live in the US. You cannot compare Nigeria to, Nigeria to America when it gets to that level. American soldiers, naval, marine, they stand for the constitution of, of the United States of America. You and I will remember January 6th insurrection. The military told Donald Trump, hey, sir, although you are the president or the commander in chief, but we sworn an allegiance to the Constitution of America. We cannot do what you ask us to do. Donald Trump is still in that hot water. Would that happen in Nigeria? Hey, no, sir, because what? The country in the first place has no constitution. The people that are that are there now are ruiners, looters, and no rule. They are not leaders. They are ruiners. They are looters, and they continue to ruin. Part of the ruining is the human. That office was created to help people. Humanitarian affair ministry. But what did they end up doing with the ministry? They end up looting and ruin with the ministry, the Ministry of Interior. Oh, he's doing passports. Hey, backlog, backlog. Hey, this. Hey, that is what he is supposed to do. More so, he has not even done all of the duties is actually assigned to do. But also, as he's coming in, he has a bag of SPV. Molishenka said it. Even though it doesn't mean that you're speaking to people. The Nigeria case is a what? Bad joy. The more you look, the less you see. I greet you all. See you tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Give us a mad God bless you. Um, Olumide, if you're still there, sir, your five minutes final submission. Okay. So, Elvis, my, mine is going to be very short. So, okay. Um, like I've always said previously, I mean, everything boils down to 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 the way 
we, we are doing our democracy. We're doing democracy backwards. You know, when people cheat, when people don't allow, I mean, from all levels of electioneering position, from local government, councillor, chairman, to state governor, to the federal executives, to legislature, all of them rig their way there. So that speaks so much about the society. You can't, you can't build a faulty foundation and expect anything good to come out from it. So this is, everything we're experiencing now is the result of all that. So it's like the society is not ready. Nigeria itself is not ready to to reform itself to to do the right to do the right thing. You know, um, I mean that's why everything is just upside down. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm just short of words. I mean, I don't know what else to say. We keep saying this all every day, every day, every day. And I mean, it's just um, she, she's well. I mean, yeah, people can say better I do is being scapegoats. You know, maybe maybe the reason why this even got leaked is because she didn't share the boot, the loot with some other set of people and they felt left out and they decided to rat her out. So, I mean, this, this is the Nigerian system. This is what goes on every day. So, you know, not just at the federal level, state level, local government level, you know. You know. So, and I can understand obviously why you're angry, but, you know, unfortunately, this is where... This is the kind of shit hole, permit the use of my language, that we found ourselves in, and it's just unfortunate for Nigerians that we are, we are in this mess. Just unfortunate. Okay, I rest my case there. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Olumide. Thanks for your understanding as well. Um, hopefully, Nigeria will be better in our time. Okay, let me move on to Madam Nena. If Madam Nena is still with us, Madam Nena, if you're there, give us your final submission, please. Yeah, Mr. Olumide, I'm here. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Five minutes, please. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, basically, my I wanted to say something about that guy that came for um that interview. That um somebody Ojo, you know, um, the way that man came for that interview and the way he, he before they ask him questions, he already brought papers out, you know, begin to show evidence that he resigned from the company that he was and everything. I'd be like, all these things are just. All just this, all these things are just um planting. I mean, you know, like with this bet better those thing. I think see, I think it will make most of them to begin to find a better way to to hide their stealing, you know. So whichever way the man wants to present it, the bottom line remains that and and, and something that is illegal is happening, you know. Whether he resign or he does resign, I believe he did it on you know, this is just a way of them you getting out and then making yourself still a, a, a presence in this in a situation by proxy like you were me service you are trying to emphasize okay the question is do you benefit from this or not benefit from this it doesn't matter whether you're still the chairman or not the chairman you're still in control or not control because don't forget that this man's wife from what i understand allegedly that the wife is still the one that is in control of the business so at the end of the day is you see him there in proxy so the truth about it is that these people are just a bunch of criminals that we can never we can never find a better word to use to describe what is going on, what they are doing and everything. If I, I, I keep saying it, if for any reason they want to give us the impression that they are, okay, now they're waking up, they want to fight corruption. That corruption has to start from the beginning. It has to start from Tinubu himself, himself because Tinubu himself is crime personified. They have to start from him to begin to prove and everything. So you cannot tell me now that they want to use uh, better and they do all this shara, 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 shara. At the end of the day, the whole thing dies out and everybody goes to goes up to business as usual. You know, suspending better do is doesn't make any sense as far as I'm concerned. As well. she is still she is still there and she's still doing her thing. That she's still there and she will still eventually get back to her work. So these people are just a bunch of criminals that accept. There is a cleansing that goes on. That's just where I stand. There's a cleansing that goes on in Nigeria. There's no way anything good will come out of these people. All they are doing is just a sherry, trying to make people, the, giving people this, the more you look, the less you see, um, kind of a thing that is going on. We let them, so by the time they start probing, going through all the parasitos and all the ministries and everything, they just will be so marveled. If at this point nobody is, people will be so marveled at the level of corruption that is going on in Nigeria. If, if they're serious, He's going to start from himself. EFCC 
they have to start from him. But of course, somebody will say his uh, immunity covers him, you know. So that's a fortunate thing that at this point, nobody can do anything. But the truth remains that I say it and I say it again. Corruption can never fight corruption. APC is a bunch of corrupt criminals. There is nothing good that will come out of them. So, but all the same, let's keep our fingers crossed and see what how this thing is going to play out. Everybody, all of those people are, are, are crooks. They are all criminals that are just parading in one in one capacity or the other. And at the end of the day, if they recover most of this money that talking about, what are they using it to do? The other them, they were talking hearing about um, Abacha's loot being recovered and everything. At this point, does anybody hear anything about that again? And also, what I was, you know, listening to all this thing, one thing that was just came into coming into my, I say, see this in this Nigeria that snake swallowed billions of naira. A uh, uh, monkey swallowed bill up until today. Who found the snake? Who found the who found the um the the monkey? Nigeria is a crime scene, and if you want to, if you want, if you want to cleanse this country, the, the cleansing has to start from the top. Simple and short. That's just the way I see it. So I don't know what is going to come out of the whole thing, but I don't believe and I don't trust whatever thing that these people does because people started screaming because people started making noise. That's why they decided they want to do about anything about everything. Anyway, that is just my stand. Thank you so much, Mr. Evis. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Good night. Thank you very much, Madam Nen, and God bless you. Jija Bredma, you are calling in. Please quickly talk to us, Jija Bredma. Go ahead. Go ahead. One minute, Jija Bredma. We're rounding up now. Talk to us. We can't uh, hear you. We yeah. can't hear you, Jija. I thought you have worked on this thing already. Hmm? I don't know what you are can you, using. Can you hear me? Your can you hear me? We can hear you, but it's very, very faint. Go ahead. I see your panelists are very intelligent and very smart, you know. But uh, I think uh, for all fairness, you know, they get eight minutes, five minutes, four minutes. We can be on the panel, but. Uh, you can only take 10 people. So I think uh, you giving us the callers more time sometimes is better. Two minutes is not enough for us to give our submission. Yeah, but if I, I give everybody, if I give you, if I give callers more time, more minutes, we'll not be we'll not leave here 10 hours. You understand? Yeah, I just want you to think, I, I just want you to think about it. Uh, your panelists get eight minutes, five minutes, five minutes, or four minutes, and callers only get two minutes. You know they are not as they are not as they are not smarter than people that call that call and they sometimes it's just being repetitive. Yeah, but but repetitive. we get more we get more callers than the people on the panel. We get more than ten callers a day. We only have about ten or twelve uh, panelists. So if we, for example we have twenty five callers and you give them for five minutes, you know four hours is already out of there. So how are we gonna do that? My brother, nobody's paying me for this. It's too difficult for me, you know? For me to spend longer hours here is not easy for me, my brother, to be honest. So that's why I work with time. Yeah, my opinion, you're doing a good job. Let me just conclude by saying that uh, I listen to Miss Nina. I think uh, she lives in the United States and uh, you have the right to plead the Fifth Amendment when you're being indicted. You know, for that, uh, Mr. Tunji, I'm not speaking for him. He has been indicted. His department, uh, his uh, ministry has been indicted. He has every right not to incriminate himself with questions because this is just the beginning of that uh, inquiry. So I want you to look at it from that perspective. Instead of you saying that uh, the man is uh, hiding something or anything, you know, even though it will come out in the court of law. So let me just leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff Redman. God bless you, sir. Please, other people don't call in. Please, I'm done with calls right now. I'm sorry. Let me address this call of a thing. One thing that you guys must understand, I understand where my brother is coming from. If I have to please everybody, me, myself, I won't live here. It's not easy. To be honest, it's not easy to be here. I don't want... It's during a, it, it was during a, a presidential campaign or, or election time. That's when we're doing 10 hours, 12 hours. You know, I was just struggling doing them. You know, I don't have to, you know, please understand with us. That's why when I post out a link, if you want to have enough some enough time to, to talk, please find your way to the panel that you have enough minutes. But if you are calling in, the maximum I can do is three minutes. You know, 33 minutes and 20 people call in is a lot of minutes, you know. So thank you very much, my people, for your understanding. All right. Uh, let me quickly uh, move on. Service, can you allow me one minute, please? No one minute, 30 seconds, sir, please. We're rounding up. Okay, uh, it, it just basically to uh, stress on the issue of uh, piercing the veil.
when it comes to uh, business law uh, on this case of uh, Tsunji. Um, if you still a director in that, in that company, if everything goes wrong and then they need to remove the veil of that um, organization, they'll be going after the directors. So it's part and parcel of that organization because in passing the veil, the corporate veil refers to a situation in which the court aside, uh, put aside limited liability and hold the corporate shareholders or directors personally liable uh, for that. So uh, just to probably put that out there for Thank you. Nigerians. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mr. Dele, thanks for calling in. Please talk to us. You have two minutes. Good yes, uh, thank you. Uh, two minutes. Mr. Elvis, for Quite taking helpful. my call. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. And um, I salute the panel and, um, you know, uh, uh, all Niger Watch uh, members. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to quickly touch on what you had said earlier about um, dictatorship and, you know, having some sort of forceful takeover and then establishing uh, a better country in Nigeria. Um, that's, that's a very good point because Nigeria has no institutions. Nigeria is non-functional as it is, and it will take some time, a lot more than eight years to build anything like that. We all that live in the diaspora, if we go and research the history of the countries we live in, including the United States. There, there were dictators that were running this country at some point to build all those institutions that we actually enjoy right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you go into like places like Dubai, that we, we now think is probably at the epitome of, um, uh, of beauty and, and commerce, that was built by dictators. But what we need really is a visionary leader that um, has dictatorial tendencies as far as how long and how he establishes himself and build those institutions. So we don't necessarily we need a, a corrupt dictator, which is what people are afraid of, you know, that would have all his sons and families and dominate people and kill people anyhow. That's not, that's not, oh, sorry, buy people anyhow. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do need something forceful. I mean, I appreciate, I mean, of all the candidates I ran, in 2023, of course, Peter was the best of them all. But if they offer you Peter and offer you Jerry Rawlings, it'll be interesting to see which one people pick to actually fix the issues and the problem that Nigeria has, which is really deep. You know, and uh, that's all I have to say. But thank, thank you, you very much, much Jelly. I appreciate this. Thank God, I pick your call. God bless you. <laughs> Bye. Yes, now because sometimes people don't understand. If I had, I will address it on my finance submission. Okay, let me call on the next person to give us, uh, Mr. Jonathan. Thank you very much. Please give us your finance submission. Five minutes. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Uh, thanks to everyone there. I really appreciate it. Thanks to all the all the submission. Uh, in my earlier submission, I was um, rounding up and I wanted to make a point there. So I was saying that. Uh, this is the this is the way and the method through which the siphon Nigerians uh, common words is a very sophisticated one, actually, and this is where this is one of the areas where they get their the notion that the more you look, the less you see. It's one of those. Is this is this is this is it. This is one of the caption areas where they come up with that that there's no way you can detect them, but that's not true. It's just the fact is just that Nigerians are not looking enough. Nigerians are disinterested. They really don't want to get involved. Not until now. If Nigerians really want to do it, they really want to show interest. See, these people, they will be in jail by the end of this week. At least they will be under arrest by the end. It's, it is not far-fetched. So my goal, first of all, is to let the political class in Nigeria know, I know one way or the other, they are listening, they are hearing, is that it is no longer the more you, you look, the less you see. No, it is not true. We know that even those that are involved in this, in this crime through the Ministry of Humanitarian, Humanitarian Affairs are not just only better. Better was just their conduit, was just the just like the, the, the person that they, they put out there for that purpose. Someone said that earlier, and I agree, and I agree, and I agree with that completely. She's not alone here. In fact, Better was just doing the job of a messenger, 
like an errand girl. On that list of those that are paid, that three billion naira, well, the 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 Chinubu, uh, Lega Lega Council during the the court proceeding this last election, Olani Kweku was also there. He was paid close to four four hundred million. Olani Kweku and Co was paid. What is Olani Kweku and Co doing with humanitarian? Doing with the district? In fact, the name they use, they are so blunt and so direct that they use his, the, the, his, his chamber, his office. That is how blunt they are, reckless they are. That is not going to come into light. People will not know about it. It was Olani Kweku and Co. The name of his, his chamber, the money was paid directly to his chamber, close to 400 million. And when you check all the companies, those ones that are there, those ones that are actually registered with CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, you'll be surprised that the three of them, three, I think about three of the 10 or so companies, the rest of them, they're just names. They just write, they just open accounts, you know, with a bank, they just write, the, those companies are not registered. That's the funny thing there. They are not registered. And if they are registered, maybe they perpetrated it to CAC level where you can't even track it. But if you go to CAC, all these companies, those that are even registered, all of them were registered between January 2023 to November 2023. All these companies are not up to one year old. They were registered and incorporated primarily to carry out this criminality. And who are those individuals? Let all these people come, come out and tell Nigerians who they are, what they are doing, what is their relationship with Better Edu, what is their relationship with humanitarian affairs. How you will pay someone who is in Lagos, the, a, the name, a, a, a name, a company who is in Lagos, the name who is also a name of a Yoruba person, to go and distribute money in Anambra, to go and distribute money to, 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 to poor people in Ebuin state and in Imo state. And now you will pay one company from Castina to come and distribute money in Lagos state. I don't understand that. That is how brazen they are. They don't even think anymore. They just do it. So just to make it clear to them, we know, we know the game they are playing. We don't have leaders, we only have rulers. Yes. I will Thank leave you. it at that, Mr. Elvis. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Thank you very much for your time with us today. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me move on to the next person quickly. Um, I'll go with Ogasiem. Okay. Th uh Thank you. Thank you, Niger Watch. Let me yes, hit my time. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Let me hit it, Gobi. Actually, if I'm in the if I'm in the shoes of uh, Dr. Beta Edu, I will be the turning point for Nigeria. I don't care. But I don't know whether she must have made up her mind. Spill the beans. Give lurid details. Expose everything. Your name is already being dragged to the mud. Not that you are not guilty. But let Nigerians know, particularly at this point in time, expose everything because what is going on is far much more than what we are seeing. Expose everything. Like the last speaker said, Jonathan, how can you be doing this type of SPV? SPV means the moment you get in you form, or you form a company, how can you be companies that are still under one year old? Probably they were all incorporated in April or March in anticipation that by May they will all get in and use it to swindle money. Under seven months, we are talking of billions being stolen. No, no, no. It cannot happen. So, Bete, do you are now, it's like you are, the, you are the poster child of this corruption. Expose everybody. Damn the consequence. I know this will be going behind 
uh, we do this. If we take you, we whisk you abroad to US or to Canada or to one uh, Caribbean island, make you comfortable so that you disappear from the scene. Don't listen to them. Expose everything. And for that, a Shiloh, you normally go. I think it's so yet, but I don't know the owner of the church. They should come up and speak. At this point, Nigerians are Nigerians are going through hard times. And such amount of money is being made, is being sort of being stolen. It doesn't it doesn't bode well for the country. Already we know things are not going well. But with this, please leave no stone unturned. This is my appeal to better. It doesn't mean I'm not I'm not in support that you stole money or that they used you. Probably at your age, they want to use you. All of them, there are a lot of people connected because I make bold to say a young lady like you in that ministry with this type of thing, you can't do it alone. You know it. You know you can't do it alone. If you if you if it's if it's for if if you had wanted to do it alone, you could have been exposed long time. But everybody is playing ball. Remember, we had a news one time that the chief of staff, um, Bajabi Amela, sold sell sell jobs to the highest bidder. Yes, I listened to it on this. Yes, to the highest bidder, just to get employment. So we know a lot of things are going on. What we've been trying to do, what, what, why people sort of cutting up to P2B was because he said, if I'm not stealing, and those around me are not stealing, and my friends all they say are not stealing, he said I've caused corruption by 70%. That is the meaning because every corruption in Nigeria has a, a network. So if one of the if a major a key net a key member of the network refuses, everything stops. So all these are proven. Give this, give that. That is corruption. We know you can buy a pen. There's no doubt about that. You can buy it. We know the cost of a pen. Telling us that this is a receipt with which I bought a pen instead of ten, instead of a maybe five pound. I mean one one naira. You are giving us five hundred naira. Of course, you bought a pen. We can see it. But at what at what price? Toothpick for the price of toothpaste. Is that what we'll be doing? So, better do spill the bean. Hold your own press conference on your own and on your honor. Expose everybody so that let Nigerians know. Don't go down alone. Don't listen to them. Your name has been dragged to the mud. Even people that wouldn't talk to you are not making up stories about you. I'm not ex I'm exonerating you, but please come up and expose everybody. Now, let me quickly address it. There's one Antonio Ola who said, my analysis of dictatorship is wrong. Well, what I'm trying to say is that it's not that dictatorship is wrong. Just you have to, whatever formula of uh, solution you are prescribing for Nigeria, always consider the fact that Nigeria is not a homogeneous society. Nigeria is not. I respect, I'm not an anthropologist, but I feel that the regard I have for my ethnic group is what I should have for Ogoniman. No matter the population for Bachama, after all, the people slaughtered in Plateau are not from my ethnic group. But I'm feeling for them. I know what it means. So everybody must be taken on board. So if you are prescribing, if you are prescribing a solution for Nigeria, always use our unique pe because they are, we are peculiar. That's why in the in the West they taught me that no two human beings are the same. If you are working with anybody in the office, treat everybody as an individual. Don't say you are treating them. Too. Everybody should be treated as an individual in his own dignity and respect. So when you are dealing with Nigeria, the experience... Okay, thank you. <laughs> finish that, finish that. I, finish that. Are you there? So, so when you are dealing with Nigeria, the experience you use to handle the Southwest Yoruba, you cannot use it to handle the Kanuri or the TV or the Bachama or the Biram or the Kaje people. So everybody should be looked at individually as a people. So because of that, you must have to come a round table. That's why constitution is important. And then we have to agree on how to move. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Garcia. I appreciate you, sir. Okay, let me quickly move on to the next person, which is uh, Black Panther. Uh, Black Panther, please give us your final submission. Five minutes. Hey, how about talk, hey? You say, uh, my people, my people. Mr. Cien, my brother, is say. Mr. Cien, why they beg? Why they beg arm robber? Make you repent. You don't see arm robber where repent, where not go back to stealing. Better I do. We bring all the receipts. She has it. They've set it up. I said she's destined for what is happening today. She was prepared for it. They prepare her for it. 
just to make that those governments have a legitimacy. Even we are not getting you have noise on your background. Concentrate now. We can't hear you. Oh, sorry, I'm outside. Just for him to have strong hold that uh, he's passing through, he was disciplining everybody that still. That is what Betty do is for. If you should know, he's not going to he's not going to repent. Betty is a do is he is a set he's a satan. She's not going to repent. He was born for this. And I want to say uh, this go don't you cook Don't you cook is a thief now. Why you people then we thought he has repented. He's a thief now. So there's something on him that the APC, the presidency, has punched on his buttock that is making him to change his mind. Because if he doesn't change it, they are going to, you know, go the other way. Just like what a former ben, Benway governor, or what's his name, uh, Tom did. Something is on them now. That is why they are saying, I have changed. I have ideology. We, we, what kind of thing? You people should know what is going on. People are being given something to say something out. So it's changing. He wants to come into APC so that he will, they will not open the book on him. The black book will be open on him. I want to say something here that you see in Nigeria. Eh? There's one thing a lot of people did not, did not even see when Mr. Najao. There's one particular film, the one particular thing I watched. When we say Nigeria is not a country, we say it with an authority. And anybody that is bound to dispute us should come out with evidence and facts. Look, in a country where you have 250 million people there more, a minister gets the money of the federation and put it in his own private account. Any of you out there can please come out and tell me the policy in the entire universe that says the money of a federated a federation should go into a private account and start disbursing for a particular project of the federation. A, a, an, a, a, an, a, a chartered a, a, an accountant general took 106 billion into his private account and the gave, CBN gave us a policy. I was in Nigeria then that companies cannot put more than five half a million into account, more than half a million. That if you put more than half a million, there's going to be an investigation. They, they have to report to, to EFCC before they can go ahead. That is what the bank for the now increase it. Now, somebody put 106 billion into his private account of a federation, and he has the audacity. You should ask the question, where do they get the audacity from to take a, a whole nation money and put in his own account for disbursement for the, for something that we don't know about. These are some of the evidence that we have seen and we have said it all and all again. People will start chastising people that does not even that are non-Nigerians who start telling us what we know about our own country where we are born, our own record was there. And we can say whatever pl the place we come from. Even if we should just be calm. They are making arrangements. We are, we are getting intel. And we are going to say it out. And they are building more intel on the, 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 what is happening in the Middle East. And one northern um, elder has come and you know, said it too. We know what they are doing. We will release it. Let them come out to challenge us. Let them come out to challenge us. They are building, they are building their intel around. We know what they are doing. They are trying to use the egos itself as a pawn. But we are going to do something here that will surprise all of them. After Nigeria, we will go after every one of them. Thank you, Mr. Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Black Panther. God bless you. I appreciate your time with us today as well. All right. Let's go to... We still have two more to go. Which is um, your final five minutes, sir, then Engineer Francis. Yeah, then thank I'll you. Have, I have mine as well. <laughs> thank right. you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, regarding this thing that some people call the country, um, 
you know, it's not a country as whole and all that. We have our language. We have to be careful with the kind of language we use because some of all these things you you are causing, you are heaping costs, and you don't know the significance of the cause you are heaping. Like if you if you say the land that, that gave, um, I don't know who that is. Um, I don't uh, understand. Where is that noise? Black, Black Panther, mute yourself now. You don't finish. You mute your. You should ahead. know that by now. I don't understand. Um, so, um, if you keep, if you go around cursing the land that gave your mother life and your father life and your maybe great, 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 great grandfather life, are you going to start cursing your mother or your, your father because things are not going very well? We have to be careful the kind of language we use. When you curse the land you are from, there's a reason why people fight for their land. There are people slaughtering each other in the Middle East right now because of a tiny plot of land that is nothing like Nigeria at all. It's not even as rich as Nigeria at all. And this thing that we do where we just badmouth our country, is we are acting like sometimes I feel like, yeah, we are frustrated, but other people are frustrated with their nations too, but they don't go about just trashing the land. You, you, you can trash the government, trash the thieves, trash all the kin killers, trash all those people, but don't trash the land. The land, for better or for worse, is responsible for you. And a lot, there are a lot of people that don't have that land on this earth. It's a gift to be bad, to be bad mountain it. People should just think twice before they start doing certain things. And now I, I will move on to um, corruption. I think we really need to start tackling this head on. And I think because people are very, very passionate about corruption, normally what I tend to focus on is our very survival itself. And um, because that is why I focus on security, because I know if you fix that, the rest will fall in line. But this issue of corruption, Nigerians are very, very, you know, they talk about it a lot, but they don't actually propose things to deal with it. Sorry, properly. I have a question, sir. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the, the issue of the land, is that part of the topic that we have on the screen today? I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah, it's not the issue about the land that we have, but somebody was um, cursing the land, so I thought I should oh. address that because, oh. you know, so it's just not appropriate that we keep doing these things uh, that we do. Um, we, we need a cultural change, and like, when it comes to um, corruption now, since people are keep talking uh, like I, we should focus on corruption, now I, I, I've gone to the point whereby, from my own evaluation, that this corruption, if you okay, if you want to tackle it, it's killing people, obviously. So if you want to deal with corruption, you need to tie it to the loss of life that it is causing, because that way you isolate the poorest people, because the poorest ones, the, the little little corruption, five dollars, five naira here, ten, one thousand naira here, two thousand, it's nothing. But you deal with the true thieves. That are heaping, stealing all our crude oil, stealing the gold from Zamfara, stealing our natural resources in the Middle Belt, and uh, stealing um, uh, money from our banks and our uh, national budgets. All those people, if you start targeting them by tying their corruption to the co loss of life that it is causing, and tagging them as killers, and the law recognizes them as that, just watch how the corruption declines very quickly. Because now the stakes have been raised. You have to raise the stakes and you have to push for it. You have to fight for it. Unless it's the lawmaker that will fight against uh, uh, making a corruption um, possible, uh, leading to possible death penalty. Let's see the lawmaker that will fight against that. Because they will, they will tell you normally that, oh, you, if you want to put corruption law, put corruption law. But most of the time, the corruption law doesn't have teeth. It doesn't have teeth on it. And we have to start making it have teeth. And we have to also start making it have consequences for the family members. Because the thing, what, what I observe in Nigeria is that the family members are also part of the pressure um, uh, train that pressures the, the people, government officials, to steal. Because they will do, and they will badmouth them. If you don't do, if you don't steal, they will badmouth you. Why, why should you why should we have a culture that encourages that? If you want to change the corrupt culture, that it has to also start from that, that angle. We can't keep pressuring people that just go into office and they go to church and start playing. Oh, look at me. Uh, I pray that I get this. And when I get it, I, I'll come and spend money for you people. Which money? Is that your salary? What money are you spending? The other day, I, they went to church and wanted to give uh, the pastor, like, keep your money. They're supposed to use the money for the state. Pay, pay civil servants. This is what they just use public money as if it's your toy. And you have to start pushing 
in the direction of forcing them not to do that. And one of the ways you can also force them to do, not to do that is to tie corruption to the loss of life and leading to the penalty. The kind of sentence that they them to death next time they will, take, they will think twice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Trinidad. Thanks for your submission. Thanks for your as well. Uh, I'll grab Black Panther. What did they happen now? I beg, y'all give me 30 seconds. Go ahead. You see, eh? Nobody should come here to give us salmon. Nobody should come here to give us salmon. Nigeria is not a country. And if you are paid as a foreigner to come here to give us salmon, God bless you. For a disservice to your own country. But we are not doing any disservice to our own country. We are telling you as it is. We have not yet sat down to derive a constitution for ourselves, and somebody is preaching or you for salmon to us. Please, please, I beg you, go and tell your right. people that their agents to say Thank that you. to them. No stealing Thank the money, you. please. Thank you. Thank you. Angela Francis, please talk to us, sir. Thank you very much for your patience. You have five minutes. Thank you very much. Um, let me touch on better edu, please. Guys, do not be deceived. Better Edu is a kid. She is being used. That She has never seen that kind of money in her life and doesn't even know what to do with it. She is supposed to, they will push some money to her ministry and she's supposed to disperse it the way they tell her. I bet you in this whole thing, she may not even come out with clean uh, 1 million naira. So anybody that's trying to say, oh, crucify her, crucify her, that's nonsense. The thing is this, I will go to that uh, military uh, chief of staff that was saying something about them apprehending the officer that said something. That man is a fool. He is not worthy of that badge. How can he be saying that? Number one, in the military, your number one oath is the defense of the constitution and the country against enemies, foreign and domestic. In this case, we have a domestic enemy right there in Asarok, and the military is still keeping quiet. What kind of nonsense watered down military is that? They will have to go and get a low uh, ranking officer that has a bullet lodged in his arm from fighting for this country. They will use him to show, oh yes, discipline, nonsense. So anybody that wants to talk about something, especially with that military issue, please be straight. And like the uh, guy that suggested about corruption leading to death of somebody, what about the corruption living in Asorok? The day Yakubu announced that their corrupt plot, what about that uh, teenage kid that committed suicide? Is his blood not on their head? Go for him first, and then every other one will follow. Don't go to the tail and be messing up and making us think, oh, that's where it is. I'm glad uh, Gibbons Amande mentioned uh, something that happened here in the U.S. on that January 6th insurrection. Yes, Donald Trump even tried to get the military. And they said, sir, you are the commander-in-chief. Great. But our number one oath is to defend this country and the constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. And at this point, you are beginning to sound as if you're a domestic enemy. We will not go and shoot our own people. That is the military. So I don't even know what we have there now. We call the military. That's not military. They cannot even defend us against, uh, okay, let's say foreign, yeah, we don't know that much. But domestic, they cannot even defend us. So what kind of military is that? 
domestic living in Azeroth, they cannot finish that man in one night and tell us, hey, we have wiped out this uh, corruption. And then the uh, ones happening in San Pisa, they can't. The ones happening in Plateau, they can't. What kind of nonsense is going on in this country? And then people will come and make it look as if, oh, better I do is the problem. She is nothing. Please, guys, call a spade a spade. What we have there is nonsense. I'm telling you from the position of his dad that heard from his son that he is not going to get married because he doesn't want to leave a widow or leave children without a dad. That means that son has already decided if he's dead, he will die for the country. That is the military. I don't know about the other guy that spoke. I hope you have kids. And then let one of your kids tell you something like that. And you go say that and see how it feels. Thank you. Can you allow me to come in here, Francis? All right. All right. Um, uh, we need to round up now, my brother. Go ahead quickly, please. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, to your last comment, I, I honestly, I wish that person can actually think. But you know, the corruption in the corruption in Asorok to some people is uh, is a saint because they've been paid to speak on behalf of that corruption. So he's a he's a he's is he's, he's an untouchable okay. untouchable corruption. I'll leave that there because they've been paid to do his bidding. So they'll move from one place to another to go. Um, and I, I just wonder how much they'll continue to pay them to do his bidding. But one day, like Black Panther said, we'll continue to open the cloth for their eyes, piercing the veil. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you all today for your time with us. Um, I think before I give this uh, final submission, uh, Madam Origin is calling in. Okay, let her just quickly uh, speak to us, then we'll take it from here. Guys, help us to press on that like button still, and let's take it from here. Madam Origin, please, uh like you to quickly talk to us. Let's take it from here. Thank you very much, ma'am. Hello, you. Mr. Niger Watch. Thank you, ma'am. Please. Uh, I just want to... Yeah, thank you. Just a quick one. Yes, I just want to thank you today. I want to especially thank Mr. Jonathan and everyone that is in the panel today. Um, Mr. Pat Utomi said, paraphrased what is going on, and that is why I want to say what I want to say to you. You see, um, what you are doing, you are looking at the Titanic, and you are looking at what has my little bucket of water I'm using to empty it doing? I want you from today to look at it differently. I have a scripture, I'm not going to quote it, but I'll paraphrase it. It said, do not despise your days of little beginning. Do not despise your days of little beginning and what you are doing. I want you from today, because I know what I'm saying and I know why I'm saying it. From today, you're going to, because we know absolutely there is no country, but we are trying to see if we are going to see light in this tunnel and you're holding the candle. Nigeria is finished, but with this movement, we keep pushing. If you can help me, and help everybody paraphrase that. And whatever they call Nigeria, that thing they concocted, that thing they have imposed on Nigerians, that heavy weight they have put on 200 million is finished. But there is a movement that is pushing and will get out of the tunnel. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Criminality will not do it for us. So those of them that are the, the, the criminal gang, do not think we are talking when we say we need a righteous, a man of righteous indignation to come and rescue this country. We are not talking about you because you're going to destroy the good people. God bless you, Mr. Niger Watch. Thank you, man. Thank you for today. God bless you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Okay, I got Chris we're calling in as well. Let me quickly call him back. Uh, I don't know why you're keeping this cause late. Koga Chris, you are not even there, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, all right, guys. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. It's been a long day. Um, our conversation today was very deep, uh, competitive, challenging, and argumentative, you know, by everyone of us today. Some of us uh get to understand where we were coming from why some of you did not but i would like to um say it how it is now because i was trying to talk in riddles but some of you didn't get it but i'll say it how it is you see me i want to use myself as, as an example so it's now up to you to digest it on your own you see me myself I'm not dreaming for any political uh, career or seat or anything. I'm not. But for example, for example, it happens. Which I know that because of what I want to say now, it might not even happen. But I don't know. I, nobody knows what the future holds for anybody. But I have to still say it how it is. It happens or it didn't happen. I don't have any dream for it. But because we don't know our future, you don't know what the future holds for anybody. Nobody knows that. We only know about now. Mute yourself, please. Mute yourself. Nobody should mute yourself at this time, please. Eugenia Francis, stay mute, sir. Thank you. So at this time, I want to let you guys understand that if I come on today that I want to run for a political office, Maybe for presidency, let's just, let, let me go to the top. Let me go to the top because that's where you can even have the power, you know? Yes, you can have the power like Tinubu today, but everybody. So don't tell me nobody should come with constitution now. No, if you do this, the Senate need to touch on, the Senate need to do this and all that before everything can be approved. I know this, but Tinubu bought everywhere. <laughs> so what can you say about that? Tinubu bought everywhere. He even bought your area. The, the, the landlord in your area, he bought everybody. So what are we talking about? So, but what I'm trying to say now is this. My kind of person, I'm going to just, I don't know about you. If I'm a president today, if I am a president, and you that is listening to me today, right now, or some of my, or my panelists that is listening to me. And I finally, finally get there. I'm sorry. I will betray every one of you to do the right thing. That is how the dictatorship starts, in case you're not aware. Because obviously, out of 100% of the people that supported you to become or to get to that office. 80% of those 100% of them will be expecting something back from you. Some of them, inside that 80%, some of them are expecting something back from you satanically, selfishly, and otherwise. The people that will be expecting something back from you genuinely for the sake of the people is not, in most cases, because of the country where you and I came from, in most cases, is not up to 6% out of 100%. Now, you have to betray everybody. They'll call you a betrayer, but for the sake of the people. If you know you have a friend that is corrupt, I don't want to go there. I've not betrayed anybody before in my life. Don't get me, don't twist this. But for the sake of our country, any leader that wants to do the right thing must behave, must be able to have the, the heart, a stone heart. Let me put it like that. A stone heart. A heart that doesn't, huh, I don't know. There's a word I want to use that I can't find. All this one that all of them are rubbish shoulders with these others. 
Mr. A do something. Ah, Mr. A, all of us have been together. Now we started this career together. We did this. Or oh, Mr. B was there with me, if not because of him, I won't win reverse state. Or oh, Mr. C was there with me, if not because of him, I won't win a do state. I will, you, will be, you should betray all of them for the sake of the people and for the country, for the country to work. If not, we are not going anywhere. This is why I was saying from the beginning today that the only way Nigeria can work is through a dictator. And in the times I'm talking about right now, it's also a dictatorship. Remember, a dictator never display their mission from beginning. Yes, they never. They got there first. So that's why I told you guys from the beginning today that if me personally, listen guys, why not? Why can't you do it? If you don't do it, you are still going to die. If you do it, you are still going to die. If you don't do it, you won't live forever. If you do it, you are still not going to live forever. Why can't you let people reference to you? Do you know that in the next hundred years, what we all are talking about today, you know, people will reference to it? The only way Nigeria can work, we need a stone heart leader. A stone heart. Not all those leader at the end of the day, their children do bed. Everybody will showcase. Everybody will be there sharing wines and drinking wines. And they will be seeing it on social media. See your basaki and the See the other one. That's not what I'm talking about. Because we are not going anywhere when we continue to say things like that. We are not going anywhere. They only say what you and I want to hear. But what them themselves want to hear, they say it privately. We are not going anywhere. We need a leader that will turn his back at his people for the country to work. A leader, the people will sing his praises, but their satanic associates will cost him. That's the kind of leader we are looking for. But the kind of leadership that we are experiencing today are the kind of leadership that sings their, their, their... Somebody actually mentioned it today on this platform. What is it? Today or yesterday? Because I normally say this all the time on this platform, that these people are competing with themselves with wealth. Like Mr. A, Engineer Francis, you were governor for eight years. How much do you have? Do you think you can talk to me like that? I've only ruled for four years. I'm richer than you. This is what these guys are doing, are doing with themselves. They are competing wealth within themselves. So we need that stone heart leader that will betray everybody. That is what I would call a proper definition of a betrayer. I'll betray you all. I'm sorry. I'll betray you all to do the right thing. When you are cursing me, the people will be stoning you. When you complain the national TV, the people will be stoning you. When it's time for me to leave office, the people will say, no, you're not going nowhere. It's you we want. That is the kind of leader I was trying to say. You guys push me to analyze it properly. And that kind of leader, Anyhow, you get to office and you started doing what I'm talking about today, everybody that were angry or who doesn't like you, 90% of everybody will start liking you. Go do your history. I'm a very good researcher. I did my dissertation on Arnold Schwarzenegger. Some of you know Arnold Schwarzenegger. I did my dissertation on him because I did film and media. So I have to do my um, my research on him, you know? 
how he started his life and all that. He became a governor. I was, I was an actor and all that. And also, that guy is the guy that acted. Some of them are now that acted Terminator One, Two, Three, Four, uh, Commando, and many other films out there. I'm a good researcher. So I've researched all these people, the most of the country, 70% of the countries that works today, that even some of you that is listening to me today benefited from, it was built by stone heart. <laughs> but what kind, the kind of stone hearts we have in Nigeria is for themselves. Yeah, and these are the kind of stone hearts we have in Nigeria, not for you and I, it's for themselves. So for us to have a better Nigeria, we need that leader that will turn against his people. You know, you, you, I don't know if you guys are getting me. You know the early stage of your campaign, you want to become a governor, you want to become a president, you'll be loyal to everybody. At the end of the day, you get there, you betray everybody. Just for the people. Just for the people. And some of you that normally say, no, it's going to take time for us to repair Nigeria. If we have a good leader today, it's not going to be easy like that. Please, you know, maybe for the two decades or three decades, Nigeria will be getting better a little bit. Now lie, oh. Now lie. If you have a stone heart leader, in eight years, 50% of our problem will be solved. You will turn Nigeria into a construction site. And in the midst of that construction, you'll be building more prisons. You'll be building more museums. Do you know what this museum's for? The museums are not for animals. The museums will be for past and present corrupt politicians. The museums will be built with a glass. It will be called a glass house. Where other countries, they will be visiting Nigeria with their children to come and be, you know, to get in there, you pay you pay to enter the museum, to watch ex-politicians. Ishish of them with their big, big belly will be on Ishish slots. The wear just pants, a white pants, no shirt, with their big belly. Sure, you put a tag on their neck. Say this one is this one was honorable Sam Sam. He was the minister of works. He wrote for so 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 that tag. You wrote uh, you write everything on it. Your children will be pointing at these people. Oh, daddy, who is this? Yeah, the daddy will be explaining to them. Oh, yeah, maybe this daddy came from uh maybe Israel. So okay, or maybe America. People will be traveling to Nigeria to come and watch satanic past politicians that have stole their money. They'll be in the museum. They'll, they'll be well fed. They'll be well fed. You'll be feeding them. You'll be giving them food. But they'll wear only pants in that museum, white pants, and put a big signboard tag on their neck that, you know, whatever... You you write on it can be read can 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 be seen properly. You don't you don't kill them. They'll just be there. That's where they'll be forever till they die. We will make so much money from them through tourism. And every other person clamoring for a public office. When you see these things happening, you don't need to tell them anymore on what to do before they will know what to do. Do you know why? How many of Nigerians travel to the United Kingdom? Now, I'm not gonna, even going to talk about other countries like Canada, America, or Europe. Let's, let me talk about the country where I reside. How many kidnappers travel to UK? Whether they take go special school, go teach and say, okay, kidnapper, I'm robber. Uh, you normally rob banks before in Nigeria. Now you don't come here, now you cannot do this. No, nobody. They don't have they don't have specific schools you take them to. Immediately they arrive at Heathrow Airport, they already know that they need to change their character or you are going to jail. The same thing that will happen in our country where politicians don't need to be taught anything anymore. When people are not clamoring for a public office, they already know what to do. 
you already know when you steal, even though na 100 naira, what you're supposed to spend 7,000 naira on, and you said it's 7,100 naira, you are going to that museum. That is where you belong. If now your papa, you will take your children, say, let's go to the museum to go and watch grandpa. Oh, that day, you, oh, you mean your dad? Yes, 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 grandpa is in the museum. If they read it, they'll see big belly with the white pants with a big tag on his neck. If this corruption is tagged with a traditional ruler, it goes to the museum. To a religious leader, you go to throw them in the museum. Nigeria will become one of the best countries in the world. You see, what I'm saying right now is harsh, right? But that's the only way we can have a better country. You see all those prayers that we are praying? May God help Nigeria. God that bear go. May God help us So, In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not going nowhere. I will get old. You will get old. We will get old. Our time will pass. There's every probability that the way we brought up our children, they also continue using the same word. God forbid. I rebuke. I cast. I forbid. I bind. That is the only way Nigeria will become. And I bet you, in eight years, everything about Nigeria, 50%, if not more, is done. It's solved. It's solved. But at this time, in that eight years, just eight years, Nigeria is already better than so many European countries. In just eight years. So I'm trying to talk to some of you that is saying, you know, you're easy like that. Too. It could take years before Nigeria go better because that is how these people weaponized our mentality to think. Can I, can I just interject briefly? Yeah, I, I think what you are saying is actually very good. I think four years, you'd be surprised the, the, the change you can make very quickly if if, if you have a strong uh, leader in Nigeria. And okay. like I said, if you, somebody is, is um, stealing money, the authorities should be charged immediately. If you steal money, even if you escape the country, they should hunt you down and kill you. you because these, these people are causing too much problems in the country and the people are, are frustrated from it. Thank you. So you, you should be able to lose your life if you cause the loss of life of other people because of Thank your theft. You. Thank you too, Niger. Thank you. That was a good uh, interjection. Thank you very much. I like that. If two Niger agree that in in four years, so I just wanted to be fair to put it eight years. My people, see what I talk so now. So people will y'all drink wine, sleep this evening. Say, wait, it's one day. I better go sleep. Yes, even me, if I end this show, now sleep, I want to go sleep. Because we don't take ourselves serious, that is why we are where we are today. This kind of conversation, people don't they don't pay interest on it. So I beg you. Nigeria, I beg you, forget. But that is the only way you and I will be proud of our country. Our children will be proud of Nigeria. Our children's children. In fact, our children in abroad will be telling you, Daddy, I want to go live in Nigeria. A museum. Not be prison. If you put them for prison, you can't make money from them. It's a museum where people travel to, to come and watch them. The entry fees will be there. People who serve them food through one little hole, we hand not the pass, put it on cellophane, throw it through that little hole. You say the former minister of works, maybe that you throw it, he, he put the, this thing on a on a nylon bag, you throw it through that hole. You'll be eating it, you'll be using hand, no spoon, we are using it to eat in the museum. And this museum will be every Saturday. They will be showing at least 20 minutes of it in the national TV. And people will also be paying to watch that national TV. You make so much money from them, they will have the everlasting disgrace. If now women, they will still wear pants, but they will wear bra. They will stay there. You they have big belly. If you get big belly, put them there. If you don't like it, don't steal. If you don't like it, don't embrace or engage in any kind of corruption. The only way corruption can stop in Nigeria, I've talked about it before, 
Nigeria must reintroduce capital punishment. Yes, there should be a capital punishment for corruption. There should be. They sh it, in fact, the highest crime in Nigeria should be corruption, not harm robbery, not uh, kidnapping. The highest crime in Nigeria should be corruption, and the, 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 the penalty should be the highest grade. Until somebody that have a stone heart that can do this for us, we are not going anywhere. If Peter Obi come into power today, Peter Obi will have so many hindrances that will not allow him to do some certain job. If he wants to be calm and call everybody my senior elder brother, my senior elder brother, we are not going nowhere. I supported Peter Obi because amongst all the candidates, he was the best. He's still the best. But I cannot guarantee that he's an action man if he gets there. But I can guarantee he will do a good job. But can we actually get to that place that we want to be on time? That is what I don't know. Except it surprises us. But in the other way around, we cannot also judge him. Because you don't know what is running through his mind. You know, quiet people. <laughs> My dad normally says to me that be, be, be afraid of quiet people. So you don't know. But the only way we can have a better Nigeria, I just told you guys now. This is what I was talking about from the beginning, but some of you didn't get it. A detector. We need a detector that if you want to pass rules, you don't need to pass any document to one Senate. The Senate will come and look at it. If you like it, say me. The, the other one say no. And then the knees have it. No, 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 no. I'm not part of that. I don't have time for that. Everything will be decided in that sort of there. There's nothing like the knees or no knees. Dissolve all of them. All of them. You all are incompetent. Dissolve them. Make decisions from your side there. You see Nigeria will become a better place. If I, some of you that is listening to me today, if you want to visit Nigeria, you'll be scared. Some of you that is that that, that is corrupt or that have some satanic heart. If you want to even visit and you'll be scared, say, ah, man, I'm not going to do bad to me. They can't go put me for a side museum. You wear white pants, that pants that will, that, 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 will, that will be like a pampas. That's what you will put on. You put, throw you inside museum. I'll be using money to come and be washing you there. And God help us. It's a dream though, but it's not easy. I'm not sure it will be easy to actualize. It's a dream. But I think that that um, raising it up based on the damage that the money you steal is doing can lead to death, death penalty. I think that is doable. It's a vi viable argument to make because most of the people won't be caught by it. It's these people that steal huge sums of money that will be caught by these things. The ones that steal money meant for hospitals, steal money meant for education, for roads, they will be caught by it because those are the things that are actually killing Nigeria the most. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm I'm Mr. Thomas, hold on, sir. Mr. Thomas, you said we don't need Senate, we don't need uh, House of Rep, we don't need this. We don't... Yes, dissolve all of them. Take decision inside our inside our rock. All of us there together. I'll black matter your be so I'll knock for your door. Black matter, oh yeah, these people wanna go cash and come. Where are you? <laughs> We are in part not natural. We are for a museum. That is how. Oh Nigeria. boy, I would love to do that. Man. Maybe you send them to a work camp. Let them go and start dredging the river ways. Yeah. All this flooding happening. Somebody has to work on them. Exactly. Yeah, they how give many them people, work to do. How many people you guys think say he make Dubai work today? How many people would you say that just they go carry the form your year all those things? Not be family. I don't know the history of Dubai. Not family now. Not be brothers or something like that. I'll bring the proper history of that Dubai. I'll bring it here to let you guys know. But that's the same Dubai. Now, I didn't know a day today where they showcase. He buy Bentley there. He buy this one. And they showcased everything where they enjoy life for there. And there was even a video he did last week. He said, ah, I wish our leader can give us this kind of country. Oh, oh he was once the leader as well. Black Pata, what you want to he say. He actually said yeah. that. Yes, he said that. Of course, last week. Yeah. 
I'll bring it here. You, you don't know the kind of leadership I, I, you I have in Nigeria. The Niger Watch. Yeah. It's a Niger Watch. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know what is going on in my belly here. In my heart. God will bless you. Ah, I said there's something in you. That thing in you has been longing in so many hearts of Nigerians. But how to put it out is the problem. Now you have laid it out. If I tell you the amount of disciples that will focus on you now, you will be marveled. This word you've spoken, this is what Nigeria needs. Look at the countries that have been taken over by military. What are they doing now? They are taking all the hands of the evil people out and they are forming their own. They are having a new constitution. They are having a rebirth of their country. That is what we need. And God will bless you for speaking out the minds of millions that have been looking out how are they going to speak it. You spoke it out. Anybody that doesn't like it, oh, sorry, we can't help you. That is the way out. And that should be and that is the best way out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother. I appreciate you. Um, Can I say something? Yes, quickly, yeah, sir. I, I think um, on Dino, I, I don't know if you guys were paying attention. I, I We always bring Dino's case here now. Dino, Dino, Dino bought a Mercedes-Benz now of, for his birthday, TL Ilon in Dubai. An Indian lady was dancing for Dino on his birthday. Dino was there with Atiku. They were celebrating their loot in, in Dubai. <laughs> Kogi State, you guys, even though Ododo did not, did not get there legitimately, also celebrate that uh, you guys, you, you escaped a stray bullet. But to what Mr. Elby said, <laughs> Ododo did not get there clean in a clean slate. You guys need a savior. Nigeria needs a cleaner. That museum, eh? If they say we'll contribute money, me, I'll contribute money because I won't watch a video. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Um, I appreciate every one of you, my people. Um, if I look at the situation of our country every day, if I think you guys are not aware, the only thing that makes me unhappy in my life right now, at this stage of my life, is Nigeria matter. <laughs> it's funny, right? It's Nigeria matter. I'm a very happy person. By God's grace, I'm very comfortable. I'm very happy in life. I am a family. By God's grace, we are blessed. The only thing that stress me, the only thing that stress me is Nigeria issue. Nothing else. Normally, I don't like to shout. I don't want to be shouting. I don't want to stress myself. But this is the only thing that stress me. That you're not be telling me that I had power to hold that position. Then I will, I, will, I will not know what to do. I will betray you, oh God. In fact, I will use you first as an example for others to learn. Even as I am today, I'm not even holding any political office. You cannot be my friend and be doing something different. I bet not your try. Many friends have, you know, I've met so many people that could not stay around me because we, 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 are, we, are, we don't share the same thing. So you, we can't manage each other's. I'm sorry, especially we live in a broad where a lot of people do different things to make money. That's fine. I'm not here to castigate you. Do your thing to make your money. But what I'm trying to say is that we cannot be close. I don't want you to be, we'll be in the same car one day. You are giving me a lift or I'm giving you a lift. Police can't stop us. Later, later, they can say, okay, uh, this person will not be me doing it. But in the, in the midst of the investigation and all that, then at the end of the day, my name go the newspaper. God forbid. God forbid that. You know, so somebody wanted to quickly say something. Was somebody talking? No, not, not me. Oh, this guy, they, they, they hold me. They, they are trying to attack me now. And which I talk now, don't mean some people verse. I can't even hear nobody anymore. I think yes, this corruption I thing, uh, we it's a good idea that we talk more about it in terms of implementing rules that will capture these people that are causing all these problems. And um, it has to be really, really strong. I thought they have death penalty in Nigeria. It's just that they are not carrying out the executions. They have it. 
you know so they, they need to start strengthening the laws because this type of theft if we don't push for it they are not going to do it because it's them why would they do it and like i said why do you think uh, some countries pass laws that when they catch you doing corruption your family members get involved too they, they, they will bring your family members involved so to make sure that the people don't misbehave you know right. so we have to think about very very strict rules because if this stuff we just keep complaining and complaining and complaining nothing is going to happen until we thank put strong laws in place thank you again uh to niger i like i said you know i'm happy for some of you that um that applauded my submission but some of you might also look at it the way this one they talk you know go this one not go well but yes if you have suggestion like that just talk about it you never know a leader that is listening to you all these leaders don't think they are not they are they are not god they are human beings like you they need ideas some of them might be listening to you they might say oh my god this idea bless i go use them and he will kept it secret you go keep them very secret because for you to do this you need to keep on secret if you reach there you betray everybody that is the only way nigeria can be better Say I can't I can't win. You can't say, ah, this guy that he helped me. This guy helped me for this thing. Can't be F FCT uh, minister. The other one helped me for the other one. Can't be oh yeah, man, whatever. The other one helped me like that. Uh, 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 but better I do. Can't be the other. The other one. No, we are not going anywhere. But Peter Obi said it now when he, when he was a governor in Anambra State that people when when he became the governor they were waiting for him to give them contracts. Did they get the contract? No. You know, Even his own brother, brother he, I think he said his, his brother went to, to. You see that it will be on eh? It's also a good thing. But the one I'm talking about right now is a drastic one. You'll be building museum, right? You will dissolve the Senate. We don't need it. They are not doing any job. Since you were born, my brother gave us a mandate. The Senate are not doing any job for us. Whatever they are doing is for themselves. All these house of reps, you know, representing different constituents, uh, constituency, you know, they are, they, they are not doing anything for you and I. They are doing it for themselves. Dissolve all of them. Mr. For Elvis, now. nobody make a Akpa bill if he get the mind. Go do bed, 61 years old bed. Exactly. For, they are not doing anything for, for stadium. You and I. So you need to dissolve I mean... all of them. Once you dissolve all uh, of that, that, that one, that bad day one just rubbed me off the wrong way. It's like, yeah. what is that? Then you 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 will you will empower our police force and empower our soldiers. Those one will be behind you. And brother, we have a long way to go. The military you know? will definitely be behind you. They risk their life to 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 uh, protect the country and they watch yeah. people just squander the money. To they will go. definitely be behind you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Tony, for calling in. Please quickly talk to us. You know, this one that you're calling late, so I don't know. Mr. Tony, can you hear me? Okay, Mr. Tony, Africa, you are not there. Unfortunately, I thought you wanted to say something. You know, so I will, I will make sure I empower one military man will be receiving a millionaire every month. Empower those people. Make sure, say, they overbelly fool. Police officer will be receiving maybe 800,000, 700,000 every month. It make them the belly full so that you can be able to deal with these satanic people properly. Hello, Mr. Tony, please quickly talk to us. I don't yes, receive call this time. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. For the, for the second time, I, I just want to say, please, thank you very much. You have calmed me down. You know, you don't know how, you know, you just can't imagine how, how you know, how I'm feeling right now. I feel like I'm on top of the world, you know. Thank you. Know? you. You see your submission to, today is the best show so far ever since you started your you know because i just can't imagine that you are the, that you are you are the one speaking eh? for the past 20 minutes you know what i'm saying oh my god i really thank you you know because uh, all those uh, so-called uh, legislators and all those kind, they're too expensive you know what i'm saying this is what i was suggesting you know earlier on and then to my brother olumide whom i respect so much yeah those uh, countries that uh, you were pointed at that are running the, the, the you know the dictatorship or whatever the dictatorship had to build the country before democracy and to all of you i see that many people have been silenced right now by, by organ and world uh, you know uh, presentation right now you know closing remarks they have been silenced you know you know what i'm saying so 
Not Thank you. like dictators have to build the country. When the country is working, they return to jolly, jolly that country to enjoy the country. Now they say, now they call democracy. No country that has been developed, you know, by means of a democracy on this planet Earth. If you go to my Nigeria, what your contributions? Ever since I joined the, the team, you know, what I've been battling with people who cost me, they cost me, they tell me this, but they call okay. me that, they call me bastard, they call me everything. But this is what exactly we're just in now. Thank you very much, uh, Ogana Jawo. Thank you for coming me down. I'm going to have a very good sleep tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Tony. Thank you. All right, guys. I would like to round up now. That is my stand and nothing can change that. But unfortunately, I don't have the power as of now. I just want Nigeria to be better. And no matter the amount that we loot or we acquire for ourselves, the day you will die, none will go with you. So why do you want to do all this? I was, let me quickly put this through. I was discussing with somebody the other day. We were calculating the, the security vote that comes to my state, at those states. Calculating security vote, to, calculating the internal revenue and, you know, uh, the budget and everything. I was like, wow. So if we really want to turn a those state to become Dubai, in less than four years, we can do this. But because these people, they are satanic and wicked, they don't want to do this. I was like, okay, if you go calculate this kind of money now in the presence of the gullible satanic supporters of these satanic people, they will argue with you. Because a lot of people argue blindly. They are not even sure what they are arguing about. That is why it's good to argue, to learn. Don't ever argue to win. Thank you very much, my people. Now, here now, we'll draw the curtain. I'd like to appreciate every one of you that came to the panel today. Those of you that stay here with us, give us a mandate. Mr. Jonathan, Ogasim, Black Panther, to Niger, Olumide. Thank you very much, my people. Engineer Francis, you were here earlier on. Mother Rita were here. Mother Nena was here. Uh, Mashallah was here. And many others that were here. May God bless you all. Those of you that called in today, I appreciate every one of you. Thank you very much, my people. May God bless you all. Thank you. Um, Everybody on the comment session, I appreciate you all. Started with Mother of All. Thank you very much, Mommy. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything that you do. I can see uh, Thomas V. Thank you very much. Imo Sokri. Thank you. Michael Oganemaro. Thank you very much. Constant. Thank you very much. I can see uh, Pansat is with us as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Patrick Obona. Thank you very much. And I can see OS again. Oga Chris is right there as well. Thank you very much, sir. You called in and I tried calling you back. You didn't pick up. Oga Chris. Uh, Abu Azi, thank you very much. Tony Africa. Mon, um, Money Olagbiya, thank you very much, madam. Appreciate you. Uh, madam uh, Origin, thank you very much. Michael Ogan Amaro, thank you. Thank you, my wonderful, wonderful people. Fumi O, thank you. I can see right there. Oh, eh, thank you. That's a very, very, that's a household name in my state. Oh, eh, thank you very much, my wonderful people. And uh, many others right there. Please give me the, um, okay, I can see um, someone is there. Thank you very much, Abu Azi. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for all you do. Thank you so much, everybody, everyone. Uh, Mufi Ray is also on the comment session. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, God bless you now. All right, my people, permit me for us to end the show right now. It's been a long day for me. We'll meet again tomorrow by 6 p.m. For those of you that are going to be playing back this video, please always support us by hitting on the like button. Let our voices, our submission, submission here go far. Subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so that you can join our live uh, broadcast so that we can interact and talk with each other like this. Remember, my panelists, they are wonderful people. It's very, very difficult for you to see this kind of panelists. They are wonderful. They give wonderful submission. We don't, we don't deceive people on this platform. We say things how it is. Anything we showcase here is coming from a third party. We only work with mainstream medias. We bring it here. We show you. We talk about it. We just want a better country. We are not against anybody. Nobody's against anybody here. If Nigeria was better today, you won't see anybody that will be talking with pains. My people, now yeah, now we'll go draw the curtain. Have a good night, my people, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow by 6 p.m. by God's grace. Bye for now. Momo, that is all I know they do competition with anybody. If I offend you, forgive me. 
Show me love, oh. Go to Biza Biza. Come on, have fun. I want to know you. I can't be. I don't get to do competition with anybody. If I offend you, forgive me. Show me love, oh. I go show you love, oh. But I know they do competition with anybody. Okay. De Leo, de Leo. 